comes Rushworth right arm over and that's turned round to uh, fine leg and that's going to go all the way for four for Ollie Robinson who moves on to 23. This is played down towards third man for his century and that comes in and when balls 185 balls Rushworth Bosley does play in that area but actually gets a much finer that down towards fine leg and that's going to go all the way for four. 62nd over. Here he comes. Ooh, that's walloped out towards uh, the west side of the ground there. It's hit the, the wood at the front of the stand. Comes into bowl. Oh, that's oh. a possum edge which just misses the stumps from Leeds and goes down to fine leg for four. Miles comes into bowl and well that will help the acceleration because that was short and wide and it's crashed through the covers of four by Ollie Robinson. Miles comes into bowl, it's short again, it's pulled but it's a safe shot, it was a controlled shot by Robinson and he'll get four for it to back a square leg. It's an expensive over that from Craig Miles. Oh, well, it's too complicated at the moment, I'll just wake off as Miles bowls outside off stump. Well, I, I'm not quite sure of that tactic but never mind. He's brought across three, six, seven men. It's took loads of catches that there at slip last season. Down the track comes Lees, and he hammers that way over the bowler's head. 1997 was the bomb scare. Right. Yeah. That's a full toss from Briggs, and that is walloped by Robinson down towards the far end of the ground for six. Briggs balls again. Oh, that's a false shot. He's going to get caught here. There's two under it, and he's out. And that is a big wicket to four, Robinson. Briggs in again. Oh, that's a long hop, which or not even long hop. He didn't hop it. It's a full toss, toss a high, highish full toss, and it's dispatched for four by uh, Graham Clark. Which is off about 50 balls. Mars in bowls off to the legs and swivelled away by Lees. He controlled that shot well through, pulled it through backward square leg down to the short boundary. Miles bowls, Lees pulls and pulls beautifully through mid wicket. There's a man out on the boundary. The ball goes past him by about. In comes, basically floats that one up and it's dispatched by Lees onto the offside and beats. The dive of the fielder and goes to the short boundary for four. Reates coming round the wicket, the ball to him from the pavilion end. And he thumps that hard straight underneath the legs of the fielder. That uh, silly point in the way for four. No. In comes the bowler. Oh, he's bowled him. Lees has gone. He's lost his off stump. And he is out for 146. Durham, 300 for four. Trail by 298. Rhodes, that's whipped away by Clark out through deep mid wicket. There's nobody there, and that's gone for four towards the front of the Holly stand. Into the stumps, bowls driven by Clark the other way this time. That's a sumptuous shot for four. It's hit the rope hard and leapt into the front row of the West stand. Comes in and bowls again. Cast uses his feet and whacks that past the bowler along the floor and away for four. Mid wicket position, about three pitches away. That's a nice drive by Clark. That's going to the long boundary. Alex Davis will chase that. He will get there eventually, but not until long after the ball's crossed the ropes. A very good shot from Clark. In comes Barnard. Oh, he's come down the pitch and he's hoiked that in the air and he's hold out. A Bryden cast has fallen to the trap. A short delivery from Barnard. <laughs> Yeah, it's looking to try and get one of those balls to pop again like he had about two overs ago. This one is drifted onto leg stump and swept away by rain, and this will run all the way down to the fine leg boundary. In comes Cl uh, Barnard. Rain has seen the short legs life flash before his eyes as he uh, hoiks it past him and through for four. For a little bit there for him. He's in and bowls, and this one's up short, and it's hammered away. It's going to be chased down by Miles, but he won't get there. He just realises he won't and gets uh, decides to fall in behind it. As Davis, in, as uh, Yates in, and this is hit away nicely in the gap between 
mid off and mid wicket, both deep, but neither can get there and stop it, and it runs away. For the weekend's football results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit, little bit too late though, but yeah, good win. And for Birmingham as well, wasn't it? That was it a was, good win. Yeah. That's a pull down the fine leg for uh, two by uh, Clark. You know, so far, touch wood execution overall has been good. That's oh. a swept in the air, but it evades Kai Smith. It's going to go down for four. Cricket, but it's not ideal, and that's a big shot. Yes, hoiked away onto that short leg side boundary for six from Ben Rain. Uh, Briggs bowls, and that's whipped away through the covers for four by Rain. The one thing with uh, that game at Canterbury, but Dom Sibley was batting in his. For the two cathedrals. Left arm over, that's hit down the ground for six. That's a big shot. Holly Hand obviously sees that sail over his head. And six for rain. Don't want to give, oh, he's come down the pitch again. And he's hit it over the top, to be fair, for runs. Thought he'd want to... Well, maybe Donna want to get to that follow-on target as quickly as possible so they can. Uh. Yates around the wicket. Bowls played by rain. Away for four. Barnard running round from mid off to try and dive on top of that has dived over it and it's gone for four. Comes in again. Rain slog sweeps. That's gone into the west stand. Bang. Six. Now as we get through and this one is run away down to third man. It's going to get to the boundary. Uh, so there's a man chasing round to get to it but uh, it was finely played by Clark. Baller in again, swept this time by Rain, and it's gone to that short mid wicket boundary on the west side of the ground for four. In comes Rain to bowl. Ah, sorry, then comes uh, Miles to bowl. Rain is battling, and he's pulled that to back a square leg for four. Well, he's scored runs against Warwickshire and the Bears before Ben Rain. Forward short leg, leg slip, slip, bowls. And wraps with the pass. Oh, he's got him. LBW. Clark has gone. Went there we go. Back into the crease. Yeah, uh, 76. I said they can get four quick wickets. Well, they've got one of them. 460 for seven. Potts fires that one hard through the leg side and away to the west stand for four. Or the western side of the ground for four. This one is played onto the uh, through the leg side for four. So a lovely time shot from Ben Rain. He's over the wicket comes Miles. Short leg, leg slip, and a. Uh, Orthodox slip and it's a nice clip shot from Potts to back a square leg for four. Nicely played. Yeah. Here's the eight short and this is pulled away. This is going to be four more. Just wonder whether Yates is... Ben Rain comes down the pitch and clips out over the top. That's a terrific shot straight down the ground. Has it gone all the way? That one, he's gone for the big shot. He's got hold of that through mid wicket. That's going to be six. That's gone about 20 rows back in the stand. Even a bit more than that's gone above the. So we've got anywhere near that last one. And that one's hit over the top, over long on. He's been chased by the fielder, but he won't get there. And that is another six. Got hold of that superbly, Potts. Waiting, and this uh, is out. But he has lost his wicket and Yates picks up his third wicket. So Warwickshire strike the eighth Durham wicket goes. Yates again is in and bowls and that's ooh, oh, brilliantly brilliant. caught and bowled. Brilliant caught and bowled. It was driven by Parkinson low and Yates got down to his right and took catch with both hands. A wonderful catch. You won't see a better one. And he's gone for a big shot there. Potts is in the air. It's, sick. it's going to be. It should be caught, and it is. And Potts has hold out, and Warwick have given themselves still only a fairly slim chance, but a chance nonetheless. And Dolby to Lees. Oh, Lees is caught behind. He's gone after one outside the line of off stump there, and he's played at it one-handed. Regal action with the bat, they almost turned it around. That one from Will Rose is it in the air but safely as the scoreboard goes blank. And it's a couple of runs, it might be four runs. It's the long boundary there. Those who haven't been listening throughout the day, the fielders around the bat, two on the leg side, one at slip. And oh, has he gone caught behind? He has. Uh, Scott Borthwick is caught behind, well taken by 
Michael Burgess and Rob Yates. What a match he's having. You know, pictures, you know, black and white pictures he used to see. That one's forward defensive and Potts defends that solidly enough, stretches forward. Of course, there's lots of rooms. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Edge Baston and the final day of this county championship match between Warwickshire and Durham. Warwickshire County Cricket Club would like to extend a warm welcome to all supporters and we hope you enjoy your day with us. The close of play yesterday, the state of the match was Durham, having won the toss, invited Warwickshire to bat first. Warwickshire then declared their innings closed on 698 for three. In reply, Durham were dismissed in their first innings for 517 and closed the day having been asked to follow on and held for two. In matches where the Home Authority has confirmed that floodlights are available for use in the competition, 
if it is in the opinion of the umpires that natural light has deteriorated to an unsuitable level, they may authorise that the floodlights be turned on so that the match may continue in acceptable conditions. However, if in the opinion of the umpires, artificial light then exceeds natural light, making it difficult to see the red ball against the surrounds, play may be suspended in order to maintain player and spectator safety. The teams, not necessarily in batting order, starting first of all with Durham, wearing shirt number 19, Alex Lees, number 16 and captain Scott Borthwick, number 5, David Beddingham, Number 48, Colin Ackerman. Number 21, Colin Robinson. Number 7, Graham Clark. Number 99, Brian Cars. Number 44, Ben Ray. Number 35, Matthew Potts. Number 17, Callum Parkinson. And number 25, Scott Bowman. And for Warwickshire, again, not necessarily in batting order. Wearing shirt number 17, Rob Yates. Number 71, and captain Alex Davis. Number 35, Will Rose. Number 80, Dan Mosley. Number 30, Ed Barnard. Number 2, Jacob Bethel. Number 61, Michael Burgess. Number 14, Danny Briggs. Number 22, Chris Rushworth. Number 18, Craig Miles. And number 20, Holly Hannah Match officials for this game are umpires Richard Ealingworth and Steve O'Shaughnessy. The match referee is Dean Costco. And the scorers, William Dobson for Durham and Mel Smith for Warwickshire. Play is due to get underway at 11 o'clock.
Good morning, welcome to Edgerston, which now, bizarrely, is sun-soaked. When I arrived in the ground, it was only about 40 minutes ago, it was blowing a horrible cold wind with rain as well. But that's cleared in time for us to start on time on what could be an intriguing final day. We thought yesterday that today would be pretty dull because for most of yesterday, it looked like Durham would do what they had to do to avoid the follow-on and therefore save the game, but they lost wickets in the final session. Not six wickets in total in the final session and find themselves following on after scoring 517 and now 12 for two, still 169 behind. It won't be easy for Warwickshire to get these last eight wickets on the pitch, which is still favouring batters. And Durham did really give away quite a lot of their wickets yesterday. So if they apply themselves a little bit more, it could be quite difficult for Warwickshire. I'm Clive Eakin. You'll hear from Martin Emerson, Phil Britton. I'm glad to say we've got Chloe Brewer today. Hi, Chloe. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm better now that the sun's shining yeah. a little bit, for sure. Central Sparks and Birmingham Phoenix. Looking forward to the start of the season. It's just around the corner. Yeah, I'm really excited, actually. We've got our first game here on Saturday, actually, um, as our season opener. So can't wait to get going, really. Indeed, so if you want to come watch some cricket on Saturday, Central Sparks are in action here at Edgbaston. Today it's the Warwickshire men. We'll be trying to get these eight wickets to secure a victory in a round of matches in which, again, winning has not been easy. Surrey have been held up a little bit at Somerset. I mean, they're in a good position to win that game, Surrey, with Somerset 61 ahead and only four wickets left. But they have had a delayed start. They are inspecting about now, though, so they may get on before long. Slight delay so at Cardiff, but they are getting away at 11.15, where Derbyshire are chasing 401 and a 40 for one. They're also inspecting it at 11 at Leicester, Leicestershire. And Leicestershire got a rear guard action to save the game. And start delayed at Northampton, where they've had 1,105 runs for eight wickets so far. Uh, so, I don't think they're going to get the results anyway on that one. <laughs> So we're quite lucky, in fact, there's a late start to it, Southampton, they're starting at half 11, Hampshire v Lancashire. Hampshire are trying to uh, hold on there. And uh, a delayed start to it, Chelmsford, where Essex lead by 374 against Kent. So Oli Hyland Dolby to uh, bowl. I'll text first, I've just got to do a report at three minutes past 11. Exactly. <laughs> Three minutes past. Yes, it's exact. It's great. <laughs> Brilliant. That's awfully specific. I start at three <laughs> minutes past, and if they don't, uh, if they don't press the right button, well, that's <laughs> tough on them. I go at three minutes past, whatever. Uh, sirens around the place. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> yeah, something's New gone York down. or something, but it's um, it's not quite as dramatic as it sounds. I can assure you. However. We do have Conor Lackerman on strike, two slips in place. We do have the night watcher at the other end in uh, Matthew Potts. And the dog, we've got the first, we've got a crucial wicket of Alex Lees in the second innings yesterday. That's turned around his pounds by Ackerman down to fine leg for a single. Well, it's interesting how Potts approaches this now. He, he did his job by uh, making sure no one else had to come in yesterday. The second wicket fell. Does he now go for his shots? Or does he try and dig in? That's the thing, isn't it? It's, we've got a trailing by 168 now. So does he just cause a little bit of damage and let the rest of the batters or to do it back properly? It is an interesting balance this for Durham. So Alan Dorby comes into bowl. That's left. There's no run. I, um, if they bat positively and score at a decent rate, then they'll have to bat for less time. <laughs> Whereas if they dig in, they might have to bat for most of the day. So let's do a, I did a calculation similar to this yesterday, but let's do it again. So Durham, in their first inning, scored at 3.69 and over. They are currently 168 behind. Hannah Dobby bowls, there's no run. Let's say, and I know it's T is an immovable fee, so this is not exact, but let's say they have 64 overs before T. Mm -hmm. If they score at that rate, by that time, they will be 
about 68 runs there, or say 70 runs ahead, which wouldn't quite make them safe. They probably do have to bat if they're going to score at that rate. About an hour after tea? Yeah. So we get me three minutes past here. Um, so that's the challenge for them. I was thinking on the way in, parallels of, quite often as uh, Hannah Dobby comes in to bowl to Potts, pushes out to mid wicket, there's no run. I've seen teams come on the final day, just need a certain number of wickets and then not get them. The one that stands out for Warwickshire was, I think it was 2011 when they uh, went to Southampton. They needed six wickets on the final day to beat Hampshire and therefore clinch the county championship. And they just could not get them. It was a really? real road of a pitch. It was really flat. Mm. And they just could not get the six wickets. I think they did eventually, but not until it was too late for them to actually just score the runs. So they missed out on the county championship as a result. So this is not by any means a certainty for Warwickshire. It's Hannon Dolby bowls, and that's pushed back to him. And there's no run pushed back by Potts. That is the thing with pitches that aren't doing too much and it's about his dream really isn't it um, it does make it a lot harder to get those rookies even though they've taken well they've been forced to follow and I saw this morning it was I think it was the highest total I'll, made to follow on I'll, I'll come back to that that's actually it was originally stated as that, that that's been corrected slightly now um, as Hannah Dorby comes into bowl. This has come, Mike, thanks to Mike Taylor for sending me, this has come from the Association of Cricket Statisticians, who initially, and I'm actually, I'm going to do a report in a second, so I'll come back to that. <laughs> this is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston, where Warwick should need eight wickets today to try and force a victory against Durham, which will be a a good victory given the batting conditions but it's by no means certain for Warwickshire uh, they'll have to work hard to get these eight wickets Durham rather gave some wickets away yesterday even though they scored 517 but they were 12 for two by the close following on they've had a one run in the first over this morning and are now 13 for two still 168 runs behind Warwickshire ha probably have to bowl Durham out by T or just after T if they are to win this game the good news for them is the weather looked considerably unpromising about half an hour before the start of play but it cleared in time for us to start on time and Durham are 13 for two that was too long never mind <laughs> you carry on Rose from Philly and just outside oh it's just drawn him in a little bit there's that short side boundary so if he gets enough of it it is four however they've got a slip in play and somebody is on the rope as well um, so what was the corrected Stop. So, they originally said that Durham's 517 was the highest total made by a team. They said, to be fair, they said they believed it was the highest total made by a team, then has to follow on. They have now found two incidents uh, of higher ones, so they're now saying it's the third highest. Okay. Rose again on a lamp defended by Ackerman there. So, the third highest. So, what was the So, they, uh, they found Dur uh, Somerset had to the, um, follow on after making 530 against Derbyshire in 2007. Derby made 801 for 8. And they found Middlesex, who followed on having scored 544 in their first innings against Lancashire in 2003. But they come up with other stats as well, which I'll come to after this ball. Road running in again. And that's just on a length, defended back to him by Ackerman, another dot. And they think, and these things always take a lot of checking, but they think that Warwickshire's top three set a new first-class record by all scoring at least 178. Yeah. They believe the previous record was 147. So that's uh, Rob Yates, Alex Davies and Will Rose. They also think Warwickshire's total is the ninth highest first-class score for the loss of three wickets. 698 for three. There's one more in a moment. <laughs> Rose again. And that's just back of length, punched off the back foot by Ackerman there. And to be fair, uh, Brian Halford had already come up with this one, I think. But the opening partnership of 343 between Yates and Davis was the highest opening partnership by Warwickshire at home. Yeah, I saw that as well, actually. I think there was one by in 1960 by N.F. Horner. And Khaled, oh, I'm going to butcher the name, Ibadilla, um, 377 red. Ah. Rose again, outside off, left alone by Ackerman. 
And that was in 1960, so that's really taken the old record back. your time. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. Film, I remember it. <laughs> 1960. Yeah. That's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how many stats come out of the locker once. Some big yeah. scores come about, isn't it? Yeah. Must be the straight shot scene. The kookaburra ball. Do you, have you ever used that? I'm not sure, you know. I think so. Rose. And again, it's just outside off. Cutaway point. Tumbling stop there, and that brings the end of the over. 13 for 2 of Durham. Um, I think on Saturday, you better check the brand there. Make sure it's got jukes written on it. <laughs> yeah, I think we do use a kookaburra. We aren't. I don't think there are any women's jukes balls. Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah, because last season in County Championship, there were so many issues with the balls being given back, so it was breaking apart. Right, the okay. And the year before. Okay. Uh, I should emphasize, I said yes, there's nothing wrong with a cookerboard ball as such. It's obviously yeah. a very world renowned manufacturer of cricket balls. It's just that in these conditions, Particularly when there's dampness around, which is a bit less of in this game, it can be quite difficult. But I also do wonder whether the bowlers get it into their heads a bit. If they convince themselves the cooker bottom ball's going to do nothing, then it probably won't do anything. Uh, that one is bowled by Hannon Dolby, that's played to square leg by Potts for a single. So the second one done on the matter this morning. That is the thing with cricketers as well, is they're quite superstitious and. I feel like so sometimes when something's in your head, it's just going to go that way. And yeah. Are you superstitious? No, not really. No, let's say everyone is a bit, but no. No, I'm trying to be rational about things. <laughs> oh, Hannah Dobby comes into bowl. Right arm over. And that's going down the leg. So the amount of times I do football commentaries that this has got angry with me because I've said something like. Well, there was one in particular where Coventry conceded a free kick and I said they mm. shouldn't score from this. And of course they did. And people blame me. I just try and explain. Let's try and be rational about it. Me <laughs> saying something in the commentary box isn't going to make it happen. Or oh, I am. Oh, commentator's curse, isn't yes, it? Yes, the commentator's curse. I, I, I always <laughs> rail against that when people uh, refer to it. Hallen Dolby bowls to uh, Ackerman. Ackerman pushes that back. And there's no run. Well, let's try it, shall we? Ackerman is looking <laughs> very solid here. Doesn't look like he's going to get out. Next <laughs> ball. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's definitely something there. I've definitely been on the the um, worst side of a commentator's curse as well. Oh, yeah. Remember okay. watching getting out back and the commentator said a ball four about a duck streak. And guess what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you have do you have a routine, superstitious routines before games as Hannah Dolby comes in to bowl the Ackerman? There we are, commentary commentator's curse <laughs> didn't work. That's played them to the onside for no run. <laughs> um, to be fair, I'm not that bad. I'm not like, oh I have to put my right pad on first and my left pad on. I just pad up. I feel like in the morning I do like to play the same songs each game. But other than that. Okay. Yeah, it's gone back a few years now, but I had uh, I was covering Worcestershire, so it's gone back a lot of years now. Mm. And we were at the old Southampton ground as Hannah Dolby comes into ball. Scoreboard's gone blank momentarily. That's played back to him. By Ackerman, there's no run. And Steve Rhodes was on. Mm -hmm. Kevin Lyons had come with the, the common position then was an old hut. You had to climb a ladder up. <laughs> John Hughes, bless him, uh, no longer with us, sadly. Um, was a regular there for uh, Hampshire. Uh, we'd have to walk up the steps and sit in this hut and it was a good view it was over the, behind mm -hmm. the bowler's arm and Kevin Lyons the then Worcestershire coach came and uh, sat up for a while to watch ch chatter with me I think Will Rhodes was on uh, sorry Stephen Rhodes was on about 90 odd as Hannah Dolby comes into bowl and he's pushing the outside the and Kevin Lyons said oh I'm going to go back now and he started getting up and head and Steve, I said, what are you doing? Get back there! <laughs> you can't have your changing position. <laughs> so he had to sit, uh, sit there until he got his hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I feel like that's quite acceptable. <laughs> if someone's on 98, 99, nobody moves. Yeah, it doesn't feel terribly rational to me. However, <laughs> it's been a sport rational. 14 for two, 13 overs bowled. 
and uh, well, the tighter that Warriors can keep it, the longer they have to try and bowl Durham out. Yeah, we've got eight wickets left for Durham, so all they've got to do today is bat, bat for long enough. I can hear the wind. There is a wind, and it was very cold wind this morning. At the time the sun was in, but it was very cold when I got out of the car. <laughs> Yeah, you can definitely tell it's still April. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. This is actually the only match that started on time. Others really? are looking as if they're going to start very soon. Okay. But this is the only one that started on time today. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of rain around the country. I got out, I was in Oxford this morning, and going from a house to a car, I got, oh, it was a massive downpour, I got soaked, which I wasn't best pleased about, but <laughs> here we are, a bit sunnier. Roads in from Pavilion and full of length defended that's just beaten backward point and that will race away to that shorter boundary first boundary of the day but we have it well, that's all good news for Durham trying to get a boundary yeah that's definitely what we need sure just to help them close that trailing Number. Rose for his second ball of the over. And that's for just on a land fair defended. Back to John who gives it a little bit of a clean. Yeah, so Durham only got three bonus points, they got no body points at all. Normally when a team only gets three bonus points, you think they've bowled the opposition out but not not got batting points. It's the other way around for Durham. <laughs> so if they lose this they only get three points. If they get a draw, they'll come away with eleven. So it's pretty important for them. Rose again, full of length that's driven to mid off that who's and that'll be there. He's an incredibly tall man and he is. So I think he's six foot seven. I think he's this is six foot seven. Some have speculated he might he be even slightly taller than that. Really? That is tall. He'll be getting the full force of a wind. Six foot seven. It's <laughs> the same as the Leeds United goalkeeper. Melier is listed as six foot seven or mm. two meters in young people's language. <laughs> Rose again, and that's just on the length defended there by Potts. And square leg's just being sent out to a boundary. That's the long boundary as well. So. I'm not sure if they win this, could go top of the table. I know it's fairly early days. Mm -hmm. They won't if Essex win their game, but Essex haven't been able to get on. They've got a lot to do in their game. Mm -hmm. So Warwick should win Essex, don't. And after two matches, Warwick should be sitting top of the pile. The uh, bales are blown <laughs> yeah. off, these red <laughs> bales. <laughs> And once again, Richard Lee with the umpire is dressed as if he's about to embark on an Arctic expedition. <laughs> and he's replaced the bales. Rose it in again, just on a lap defended, back to him this time. <laughs> um, yeah, the umpires better keep onto their hats today, actually. I could imagine it's a, a bit temperamental with the wind. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> He's got a little sort of snood muffler and black gloves on yesterday. Which <laughs> his pants are in his pockets at the moment, so he's going for double protection. I think, I think he has got the gloves again. Yeah, I think he has got the gloves again. I don't blame him, if I'm honest. A lot of players' hands are in their pockets as well, so... I reckon his hand warmers in their pockets. As Rose comes in again, just a foot of length defended back to him as a carbon copy of the ball before. <laughs> and that brings the end of the over. Durham at 18 for two. I suppose it's difficult for the umpires, not as if they can run around much. I, mean, I suppose they can run a, run a bit if they want to run to square leg or from square leg back to the mm -hmm. stones, but it's not like referees of other sports who are able to run around a bit. Yeah, football referees are incredibly fit. I reckon yes. they do so much running. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, oh no, square leg umpire's just having a bit of a jog to himself. Like yeah. <laughs> Keep himself warm. So 18 for two, Durham so far so good from their point of view. They've seen off four overs, long way to go, but they'll be no doubt counting this in small blocks. Colin Ackerman was explaining, was he 
yesterday has got a world or did have a world record against the Bears in T20 cricket. Mm -hmm. Alan Dolby, right arm over, bowls the bouncer. He took seven wickets for Leicestershire in a T20 game really? against the Bears at Leicester, which at the time was a world record. It's the second best figures in T20 cricket now in the world. Okay, do you know the first? Uh, it was, uh, I forget who it is. It was, okay. it was, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but it was two fairly in cricketing terms, fairly yeah. minor nations played each other and someone took seven for eight, I think, whereas that could oh, was wow. seven for sixteen or something like that. Okay. Uh Dolby from the Birmingham man, right arm over with a slip in place, two fielders in that mid wicket position. It's solidly defended by Ackerman, it looks like he's intent on just keeping the ball out. At least to start with anyway. And there's no run. And so far not really any alarms for the Durham batters today. So Alex Davis yesterday was trying all sorts of different things when the wickets weren't coming. And he's again, he's moving everything around now. So he's now putting a leg slip in. Uh, <laughs> every fielder is putting their hands somewhere in their clothing to keep them warm. <laughs> but he's put a leg slip, quite a wide leg slip. He's got an orthodox slip and he's got a fielder at Square leg about four pitches away and then one alongside him at mid-wicket as Hannon Dolby comes round the wicket now to uh, Ackerman who just repeats the shot. Very solid defence. Back to the bowler. No run. So they're going to start at 12 o'clock at the Oval where mm -hmm. Surrey will have high ambitions to get a win. They've been held up a bit but they are going to get underway. And they're also going to get on way at half 11 in the second division between Yorkshire and Gloucestershire, where Yorkshire needs six more wickets to win. And they are underway at Cardiff. Darbshire uh, got an unlikely looking run chase. That's short. It's pulled by Ackham. He didn't get hold of it. And it ends up rolling along the ground to mid on. That short, tempting boundary there on the leg side. He didn't get hold of that Ackerman. First shot in anger, really, this morning. He didn't time it terribly well. That is the thing of having a short boundary. Your eyes light up as a batter. You see it, it's like, oh, it's tough to hit this too hard. And do you know what? It always catches people out. For sure. So this is a definitely very good game plan here, especially to mix it up. And it all be round the wicket. It's pushed out to the outside. There's no run. Yeah, I think this is really good from Davies just mix it up because if a pitch isn't doing anything, you have to kind of force force something to happen. Yeah, that's what he's been trying to do. Didn't like that big, it was very windy, certainly on day one against Worcestershire. He didn't like that, and it caused him some problems with his run-up. Seems to be affected by the wind so far today. He's brought a fielder closer in at mid-on now. So again, he comes around the wicket. Ackerman plays it around his pads, down to fine leg for a single. 19 for two. So no time lost today, so... A minimum of 96 overs are to be bowled in the day, and we've had five of those so far. Yep, hopefully, we don't have any disruption throughout the day. Yes, I think there are. there is a threat of showers mm. during the day. And it's actually getting quite cloudy now. <laughs> yeah. Just the sun has gone in, I'll be feeling the cold even more now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just hanging on to that little blue patch above us, ignoring any other clouds. So, Rhodes is continuing from Pavilion and got a leg slip and a normal slip in play. And that's just on a length defended. It's got deep points, so that's gone one out to deep point, rotating the strike. So it pots. It's now a stripe. Deep point has come up, I believe. 
and we've only got deep fine. He's kind of very wide deep fine out on, on that deep boundary. Will Rhodes Spoli with a new ball, relatively new ball, because Chris Rushworth is seemingly out of the game, having suffered a calf niggle. Mm. Rose have only got a few overs. Rose and Hamdor, we only got a few overs yesterday. I can't remember how many overs in. I think we're about five overs in to the ten that were due to be bowled when the umpires ruled that they had to go to spin because of the light. It actually worked out pretty well. I thought they got a wicket. But <laughs> yes, a rule that's worked in their favour. Yeah, sure. Don't think it'll be too long before we see perhaps Danny Briggs and Rob Yates into the attack, possibly Dan Mosley. Got a catching mid-wicket in under a lead now, and that's on a lump of his legs, and that's been it's just kind of inside edge that down to a fine leg. A couple of things that Rob Gates said to me yesterday when I interviewed him afterwards. It's actually madness, I think, but he he got a four for him. Thinking for, he might get his first five, so he was quite pleased when Ed Barnard spilled one out on mm. the boundary <laughs> off Dan Mosley. But then the next catch came to him, so he had to take it. <laughs> and himself a fifer. But the thing that, and I, I, I'm not thinking about it, thinking whether he was joking or not. Rose again, full of lamps, played two mid wicket there. At one point, not long after a wicket had fallen. Mm. You can hear Ed Barnard going, get him, come on lads. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, is that real? And he said, no, he was, he was celebrating Villa scoring their second goal against <laughs> Arsenal. That's, br that's brilliant. Oh, OK. <laughs> Glad to see he's concentrating. Yeah. Concentrating on the game ahead of him. <laughs> that's brilliant. Rhodes running in again. And that's just a length patted. Back down to mid on there. <laughs> that, is that one of the ground stuff he's doing a running session? I think it might be. It looks absolutely brutal what he's doing. I thought that might be not good. I'm saying that's not home. I'm saying that's be a bit annoying. Oh no. I'll have to borrow Marty's later. <laughs> Yeah, who is that? I'm trying to work out who that is. Rhodes again on the length defended back to him. He's not giving Durham much here to play with. He's really attacking those stumps and not giving Durham much room to get their hands through at all. I mean, his running session looks absolutely brutal. Well, I think it's Liam Norwell. Yeah, it is Liam Norwell. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say. So that's encouraging, seeing him do a bit of running. That's good. <coughs> Rhodes running in full of defended there by Ackerman that brings the end of the over Durham at 21 for 2 the thing I always think is brutal is in football because they have so many substitutes mm. is at the end of the game all the substitutes that haven't been used and the ones that are only on very briefly Mm. We'll have to do this intense running exercise <laughs> at the end of the game. Yeah. yeah. We sometimes get them in the cricket. Sometimes. If, if the SSC coach. It's a bit harsh. You didn't get on without <laughs> having to go on the run around. Yeah. Steve uh, Grizovich, who summarises for us brilliantly on BBC CWA, said that the thing is, what the players are told is you can either do it now or you can come in tomorrow morning and do it. <laughs> so they all get it done there and then. Yeah. That's, yeah, we but had a, a game at Rotherham where, um, mm. after the match, the fire alarm went off. Yeah. And we were in the middle of our program, and we had to. We were told we had to get out and leave mm. the ground. We said, "Hang on, a bit. The players are all right. They're still running." <laughs> One of the players said, "Listen, mate, I'd be more than happy to be told to, <laughs> to leave the ground." But I, I'd say, yeah, but yeah, they were they had to carry on doing running. We had to leave. Anyway, <laughs> so far, no real drama this morning. A hint of a false shot from Ackerman, but not one that was a remotely dangerous when he tried to pull a delivery from Hannon Dolby. He's got a leg slip. Oh, the Potts has got a leg slip. Now, and there's a forward short leg and a quite close mid wicket. 
no orthodox slip at the moment, although Alex Davis is just sending someone else into the catching circle. He's put him on the leg side. Well, that's um, Kai Smith who's on, because uh, of course Chris Rushworth remains off and will be for the duration of the game. So Kai Smith has moved in about four pitches away at square leg. Oh, she's taking two strides <laughs> forward now. And Helen Dorby comes into bowl. Right arm over, and that's driven down the ground. It was up in the air briefly from Potts, hence a slight yelp from Hannon Dolby as he dived to his left to field it, but the ball had been grounded long before it reached him. Well fielded, though, from Molly Hannon Dolby. Enjoyed this game a bit more than the first one, even though it's been difficult for the bowlers, particularly the seam bowlers. But he's enjoyed some notable successes. He comes in now to bowl, and that's a slower ball, which has played a backward point for no run. Yeah, I think that's a really good approach, especially on a wicket that's not seeming about too much. It's changing a pace up, it's trying to force something out of batters. Who, uh, want to follow all that's going on or not going on, all the <laughs> other grounds, then the BBC Cricket page online is a place to go. A pessimistic prediction from Adrian Harms at Leicester. He doesn't think the prospects of play there in the game against Sussex look good. And he says they look remote. On there, so in comes Hannon Dolby. That's punched up to the onside. There is no rum. Uh, so hello to Phil, Harry, Gary and Deepak who are looking after that page today. Field four on the legs, a bit of almost leg theory. They were pulled up for a no ball, so that's played for a mid off a no run yesterday when they had too many batters on the leg side behind, too many fielders, I should say, <laughs> behind the batter. I don't see that too often these days, <laughs> the old body line I rule. Don't actually, um, I saw a picture that Warwickshire put on their socials of everybody in. You know, the iconic every single fielder yeah. on the bat. Yes. A bit like that. <laughs> In comes Hannon Dolby. Round the wicket to bowl to Potts. And that's left, there's no run. Was, used to be one at Cricket Ground in Portsmouth. I don't mm -hmm. think they use it anymore for county cricket, but there used to be one there. I think it's Portsmouth. And it was the last ever match, and I think the batting team only needed one or two. So the picture of the fielders, most of them just hadn't bothered to get changed. They were all in their old, normal clothes. <laughs> it was an old picture, very old picture, but they were all in their normal clothes. And I think it was worth getting changed for a, a team needing one or two in the day. <laughs> Imagine doing that now. Yeah, oh absolutely. <laughs> Something similar, not that they really didn't come out in cricket gear, but something did similar happen, similar happen here when Nick Knight was uh, captain in the field. Mm -hmm. The opposition needed, I don't know, four or five of the final over and didn't get them, so we had to come back the following day for them to get about two runs. <laughs> Alan Dolby round the wicket to bowl. Well, it's played a mid wicket. And some people criticise Nick Knight, so I'm like, this is silly, it's just you know, let them score the runs so we can go home. And, well, you know, it might rain all day tomorrow, you never know. <laughs> the forecast might be wrong. Anyway, I'm going to let Martin Emerson in here. Chloe, uh, You'll join Chloe Brewer with uh, Dunham currently. 21 for two after 17 overs. There we go. So I'll be rejoined. Bit of musical chairs up here. As uh, Rhodes continues from a pavilion end. Durham are 21 for two. Ackerman is on at seven and Potts is on at six. We and they are trading by 89. 89? No, that's overs. Wow. That's a test in my eyes. I'm not going to test my maths either. To travel 160. There we go. It's come up. As Rhodes is running in from the pavilion, and that's 
Bumper to start the over. He's ducked underneath that. He's got fine and square out. So that's covered a good wicket taking option. And I'm rejoined. Rejoined. Oh, no, no, yeah. Is that right? Let me just check my mic. Yes, it was working. <laughs> there we go. The right way around. Well, the weather hasn't interrupted yet, has it? There's um, quite a few heavy showers forecast to mm. pass through here. Roads and full of a lamp this time. It's just got the inside edge down to fine leg there. I was looking at the uh, the radar and there was some pretty nasty stuff due right from about 12 o'clock across oh the really? afternoon. So. Well, from Durham's point of view, they've just got to bat out time here, and that's what they're doing at the moment. They've not really put many runs on today. They've only put 10 on in half an hour, but that's not the point. It's uh, a case of just eating up the overs. Yeah, definitely. They've definitely got to weigh up the risk and reward of each shot. Oh. Something Pots. in Potter's eye, maybe. Have you mentioned the Association of Cricket Statisticians? We have. Stat. We have. You can go for yeah. it again. Well, that's all right. We've done it. Third highest score by a team mm. forced to follow on. It mentioned only games in England, so I'm pres I'm wondering if those stats purely refer to the county championship. Yeah, we must must do. Roads and work down to fine leg there. Um. Yeah, I wonder if there's any higher from. Elsewhere. Greetings to listeners on Sports Extra here in Birmingham. It's a chilly day. It feels like winter again today. And uh, I was uh, chucking it down a little bit earlier, about 7, 8 o'clock. I could hear the sleet on the hotel window. I noticed Mr. Howells posting a photograph from Nottingham where there was lots of hail. Oh, that's, yeah, April weather. Road comes in short of level. He's Try to pull it, it's just missed and it's hit him on his chest. I think low pressure's in charge again this week, so it's going to be quite blustery and wet at times. Yeah. Durham back down here on uh, Friday at Kidderminster, so we'll be wearing our layers in the marquee there. <laughs> yeah, remind me to bring my coat for Friday. As, um, so do you guys go back up to Durham to come back I don't know what the I'm going back up today I don't know what the team's plans are okay. uh, Rhodes in again and that's short of length pulled successfully this time but it will only be one run out to Deep Square there who sends it back in yeah because last week is quite smart going from Warwickshire to Worcester cause yeah. only, what 45 minutes away I want to get back up and see the family and uh, my yeah. daughter had her ninth birthday yesterday so uh, <laughs> we had a little video and wrapping of presents yesterday morning. <laughs> Bless. They're what? all back to school the day after Easter as well. Reality <laughs> has uh, hit this morning. Roads in and that's a short black. I don't think that's got quite high enough to duck but he's ducked out way of it and that brings the end of the over 24 for 2. You can probably hear the wind on our effects microphone outside the trees beyond the car park billowing and there was uh, gusts of around about 45 miles an hour forecast today. So the story of this game, if you uh, haven't followed it that closely, Warwickshire 698 for three declared. The first three batsmen all making at least 178, which was a new record. That was their highest opening stand on this ground as well of 343. Uh, Rob Yates made 191, Alex Davies 256, a career best, and Will Rhodes 178. Dan Mosley also made 55. Durham were doing okay, and then it got to yesterday afternoon, and they were chipping away and chipping away towards the follow on target of 549. And uh, Alex Lees had made 145, Graham Clark 76. Ben Rain was on 93 when he tried to paddle a ball around the corner from Yates and dragged it onto his middle stump. And then Durham were all out for 517. So a deficit of 181. And they got to within 32 runs of avoiding the follow-on. But were made to bat again. As Hannan Dolby comes around the wicket to bowl here to Ackerman. That's defended. 
So according to the Association of Cricket Statisticians, the first tweet I saw from them last night suggested Durham's score of 517 was the highest by a team asked to follow on, but then they managed to find a couple of other examples as well. Somerset made 530 against Derbyshire in 2007. That was after Derbyshire had made 801 for eight declared. And Middlesex made 544 against Lancashire in 2003 after Lancashire had made 734 for five. So uh, it would appear Durham's was the third highest. Um, we don't know if that's in all first class cricket or county championship first class cricket in this country. So there's been a bit of a delay here before the next delivery is bowled. And it'll all be around the wicket to the right handed Ackerman. He just plays that short to square leg, no run there. And uh, looking through the scorecards as well, six scores above 500 in this round of matches, which mm. is not only highly unusual, but certainly for this time of the <laughs> year. And everybody is pointing the finger at the Kookaburra ball. And then. The Duke's ball returns on Friday. Okay. I can guarantee half the matches will be over in about two days or so. <laughs> <laughs> 24 for two Durham then as Hannon Dolby bowls to Ackerman. Ackerman plays that off towards the square leg boundary. It's a short boundary, just about 50 yards. He gets a single. So Durham began this morning on 12 for two. They lost Alex Lees in the first over last night. He went after a ball from uh, Hannon Dolby outside the off stump and clipped it to the keeper Michael Burgess when he was on one that was his second ball that was in the first over and then Scott Borthwick departed at the start of the eighth over caught behind off Rob Yates's bowling for seven so that brought in night watchman Matthew Potts Esquire who's on seven and Colin Ackerman at the other end is on ten so they're now 25 for two the plan is to bat and bat and bat. They still trail by 156, so they've got to keep batting all the way through today, really, Durham, to save this one as a draw. As Hannon Dolby comes in the bowl to Potts. Potts mm. has a waft at that. It's gone down the leg side. It's spilled by the keeper, whose cap then blows off his head. He's down <laughs> on his knees, but they don't run. The ball is uh, fielded in the end by Rob Yates, who is that leg slip both sides minus a bowler Scott Boland has hardly played any part in this game he suffered a, a foot issue we think on day one and Chris Rushworth went off yesterday a former Durham player for Warwickshire with uh, a calf problem we believe and then Dolby from the city end Potts plays it to short leg no run there Feeling in there is Jacob Bethel under the helmet. Dan Mosley was feeling at short leg yesterday and got mm. whacked off the head mm. and uh, had to go off for a few overs. But he did come back on later in the day. And Lynn Tott, who was one of the substitute fielders yesterday, hurt his arm and he had to go off. So <laughs> it was a bit of a. <laughs> what do you call it? Those, uh, what's those revolving doors in the dressing room yesterday with all the <laughs> replacement players coming on and going off? <laughs> the big swathe of rain looks like it's just passing to the north mm. of Birmingham. And then Dolby right arm over this time. Two pots who steers that out through mid wicket along the floor for one towards the Raglan stand, which is going to be demolished and become a hotel. That is the end of the over, 26 for two. Durham are in the throes of going through the whole planning permission process for a new hotel at the Riverside as well, at the north end of the ground. Okay. You see some spin from Rob Yates now. I think there was only something like four overs bowled last night when the, oh, really? the light became poor and the umpires insisted the spinners had to come on. So but Yates got a wicket with the floodlights on. Yeah, a bit of a blessing in disguise there, isn't that? Spinners come on. Works in their favour a little bit for Warwickshire, but Durham will want to bat here. This is a first game back in Division 1, I believe. Yep. Washed out last week against Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So it was, between Division 1 games, 2,751 days, but then because the Hampshire match was washed out and it was coincidentally Hampshire who they last played in Division 1, mm. 
September 2016, it ended up being 2,758 days. Wow. So, uh, two Covid years, of course, during all of that spell. Oh, yeah. That is taking it back a bit, isn't it? Well, it was 2016 when they were last in Jeez. Division 1, and then it was always thought it was going to be a four or five year job to try and get back into the top flight, and then mm. Covid came in the middle of that. So, if you take the Covid out of it, a very condensed season at the end of 2020 yeah. and then the conference, Bob Willis Trophy conference in 21. So Yates to replace Rhodes from a pavilion end. A bit of spin. Now it's just on 11. Back to Red Wicket there. And see if the spinners can do anything today. Yates in again. Oh, big appeal there. Yeah, he's on the floor asking a question, but that looks nothing like he hit that. that. Hey. I thought that uh, came off the bat there. A tickled an inside edge, maybe. Not sure. Possibly on the back leg. Not too sure. I think if it has hit the back pad, it must have clipped the bat on the way through. Yeah, it must have done. Yeah, he's coming in again, just full of length. That's driven this time out to deep cover. He sends it back in. We've got slip, leg slip, and somebody in somebody in short square leg catching. So two people under lids. And Yates. Top of his markers get again. Get through his over quickly as he comes in. Just short of love. He's. Spat up a bit, didn't it? Yeah, he's gone back to cut that, but not successfully. His slip picks it up. As isn't point fielder actually. Which is. It's Bethel under the helmet at short leg. Yeah, he's defended that to extra cover. I think Davies is mm -hmm. uh, at leg slip under the helmet as well. Mm -hmm. There's a carrier bag blowing across the ground now. <laughs> it will soon have cleared the holly stand. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in one of those tower cranes today, I don't think. Oh, no. will be wobbling around a bit, won't we? <laughs> on the horizon there. Yeah, it's coming in full of length time. That's driven out to deep cover. I'll tell you what I'd hate to do. You know those challenges I do when I'm a celebrity when I get them standing on top of oh, a crane? Yeah. Or something like that. And that is the end of the over. 28 for 2 for Durham. Imagine doing that today. Mm. <laughs> Craig Miles is going to come on. Spent a, a few weeks at Durham on loan last year. He played in a, a match and then hurt his, injured his hamstring and had to come back to Warwickshire. And Started this season with a month's loan at Glamorgan, but played one game and was then called back. Mm -hmm. So he's going to replace Oliver Hannon Dolby from the City. They're in 28 4 2 here on the BBC. Current partnership 18 from 77 balls, so they're absolutely in no hurry whatsoever here, Durham. It's just about existing, eating up time in the middle, seeing off the overs. They trail at 28 for 2 by 153 while following on. Yeah, Durham really just needs to bat today, don't they? Just need to stay out there and try not give Warwickshire an inch. We were discussing yesterday mm. where Durham would be roughly time-wise. At what point in the day would they have a sufficient enough lead to be able to then declare around about 5 o'clock and match and in a draw but they've still got a long way to go here 153 behind Miles comes in and bowls to Ackerman who plays the ball up to mid off no run there yeah I think he said earlier but if they carried on at three point something and over by T they'll lead by 16 how many? 60 it's not much though is it? Though? no it's definitely I wouldn't say that's enough to Stick Warwickshire back no, in. No, well, no, it wouldn't be. Just going to look on 
the weather up again as uh, Miles Bowles played by Ackerman towards the square leg boundary for one run. So Edgebaston. It's got 60% chance of rain through 1, 2 o'clock and then showers at 3 and 4 but who knows they might drift around the north of us. Problem is where the well the wind's actually coming yeah. from the northwest, so we should see them approaching. <coughs> the minute gusts of around 38, 40 miles an hour. Oof. It's chilly. Mm. Temperature-wise, it's a uh, heady eight degrees. T-shirt weather. <laughs> that's um, that's a Durham speaking about eight degrees is not t-shirt weather in. It's positively Balearic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking at the radar, there's quite a bit on the way in the next few hours. Some heavy showers. Miles bowls to Potts, who is forward to this one, plays it back to the <coughs> bowler via the ground. I guess it's kind of kind of a positive it winds it up so much as that it actually probably will blow the showers across quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully we don't get too interrupted today. There was a bit of a squall when the players were warming up mm. for a few minutes, about half ten it came in quite heavy, but it blew through pretty quick. Yeah, that looked quite nasty actually. 29 for two, in comes the bowler. <coughs> this is defended by Potts, who plays the ball along the ground to mid-on. To Hannon Dolby, who's giving it a bit of a clean. Mel Farrell was saying the other day that with the cooker ball, you need to keep it dry and not use sweat on it and things like that. It's got to be kept dry. Okay. Any reason why? Just the way it's made. And the material is different to the Duke's ball. This is cut by Potts down to vacant third man, and it's rolling along nicely. That should go for four. And it does. I don't think he's realised, he's still sprinting to the other end. <laughs> he's now noticed the umpire, Steve O'Shaughnessy, is signalling a four. 33 for two, so that helps bring the deficit down. 148. Yeah, it's really blowing that microphone out there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a crow trying to fly right to left there and it's been blown over the roof. <laughs> Bowler comes and bowls to Potts who plays that short to square leg. And uh, that is the end of the over. Kai Smith, substitute fielder, picking that one up. So then, the deficit 148. Overs remaining in the day, it says 85. Durham 33 for 2. Ackerman 12, Potts 13 here on the BBC. I think Rhodes is just coming off the field quickly. If he's alright, I think. Major, but Yates to continue from a pavilion and. We've got three people around about, so slip, leg slip. So in short catching in front mid wicket. Backwards square there as well. He comes out like so caught. It's off the pad. And it's off the pad. Half a chance. Half a chance. Trying to create something here at our Warwickshire. And it's like spin could be the way forward here. As it's just up top of his mark again. It comes in, and that's cut off the back foot by Ackerman there, out to deep cover, who sends it back around. And cover is coming in for Potts here. So only one man on the boundary. That's a deep backward square. As it comes in again, defended there. P 
picked up by the catching square. Yeah, catching square. Where is it? Yeah, he's coming in for his fourth ball of the over. And that's on lap defended. Again, looking to just get off strike his pots. The midwick is right hand there, but very quick to get to the ball, so no run from it, another dot. A few people have been uh, messaging us the last few days about questions about geo-blocking of the commentary. Um, I have colleagues who are looking into it, and I have sort of an answer for you. Yeah, it's full of lamp defended there by Potts. So um, a number of people in Australia, for instance, haven't been able to access the commentaries for this round of matches, but... Um, it's, it is being looked at and a fix is hopefully on its way uh, using a new system for the first time. So, Yeah, it's back of a length and that's what works into the leg side picked up by Midwicket and that's the end of the over. Durham of 34 for two. Yeah, they're using a new um, computer system, operating system, so they're trying to uh, sort it out and might not be sorted for this the end of this game but hopefully in time for the next round of matches on uh, Friday Richard Illingworth at the minute looks like the mummy he's got a snood right up across his <laughs> yeah, face he actually you can just see his eyes he's got a, <laughs> a white cap on he looks really he's cold he's feeling the elements today <laughs> he's brave with a cap on I'd be sticking a woolly hat on if I yeah. am <laughs> for sure I think it was a game at the start of the 2016 season when Durham played uh, Somerset at home. Mm -hmm. It never got above four degrees all week. <laughs> Hand warmers were the order of the day and about five jumpers that week. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Miles coming in then, start of a new over from the city end, bowling to Ackerman, who just plays the ball gently away back up towards the bowler's end. Yeah, I, I remember, remember the umpires explaining to them they couldn't they couldn't wear gloves. <laughs> so that's I think brutal. A few beanie hats on show. <laughs> yeah, I remember doing a, a warm up game a few years ago, and it was it was beautiful sunshine, but towards it it was like two three degrees. In the afternoon it snowed and that brought us off. But I remember fielding and had a thermal on, two jumpers, a top, bubble hat, and sunnies. Yeah. Miles in to Ackerman. There's a short leg in there. Ackerman fends the ball down into the ground. It is collected by the short leg Bethel. Well, it snowed at Cardiff last year. So what was that? That was the third week of the season. Um, it was basically this big hailstorm came in. Mm -hmm. And there was that much hail. It was the ground staff shoved it off the square using tractors and brushes and whatever but the pile of snow just st stayed on the field for the rest of the match <laughs> yeah, it never melted Ackerman plays this one from Miles up to Hannon Dolby at mid on it's a, another dot ball and then um, that's that season in 2016 Durham played the first week against Somerset then they had a week off mm-hmm I went up to Scotland with my wife for a birthday and we got sunburned during the week when there wasn't any action. And then the next match, they played Middlesex at home and I think the last two days of that were lost to snow and it was proper snow. Oh, wow. But that was going on around the whole country. I think it was snowing in London as well and Derby and very other places. It's off the bottom of the bat and rolls up to Hannon Dolby at mid-on again. So where are we now? Five to twelve. So they started this morning at twelve for two. So they've had uh, twenty-two runs in nearly an hour. Two balls left of the over. Bouncer has gone through to the keeper. Filippo, are you uh, ready for action? Yeah. I'll um, I'll head next door in a minute. 
So uh, Phil Britt will uh, come on air. Chloe Brewer is with you. We've got me, Martin Emerson, and Clive Eakin as well. Your commentary team here. Just was that? That must have been signalled as a no ball then, because we've still got two balls left in the over. It's been a good height. It's a good height might have just been a bit too high, maybe. I don't. Know. Here comes the bowler again. That's played back to him by Ackerman. The score's gone up, hasn't it? It's mm. gone up by two runs, so no ball signal there. So this is now the last ball of the over, and the wind <laughs> is getting up again now. <laughs> it is There's nice. a big bank of rain just across the on side of Birmingham at the moment, up around yeah. about Edgebaston Reservoir area again. The indoor arena. Miles bowls. Ooh. Ackerman thumps that into the ground, and it bounces past. Bethel's <laughs> left ear, like short leg. That is the end of the over. So Durham 36 for two. And uh, they trail by one, four, five. A no ball was indeed signalled. Mm. Well, there we go. 36 for two, and Durham has slowly getting towards this total. There we go, a pair of binoculars are out. We can see all around the ground. And Yates is ready. On top of his mark. And that's outside off. Big appeal. Nothing from it. Gonna be shuffling around quite a bit. In here. Not quite sure. It's that kind of stay with his field places, <laughs> isn't it? I'm gonna get Phil to uh give you a break, Chloe. Thank yeah, you very yeah. much. Oh, how's that messed? Ooh. That's gone straight through. Okay, lovely. I'll finish this over. Yes, finish this over. Yeah. And then I'll take a, a little break. And there's Yates yeah, just up top of his mark. Three people around. Bat Potts just taking his time. So readjust for gloves. As Yates yeah, comes in for the third ball of the over. That's on a lap defended there by Potts. So not letting anything through. Is it? Balls that chuck back to Yates. In from a pavilion and back of a lap, and that's been worked into the leg side. We're going to push for two here as it's a, a diving stop there by mid wicket, but square leg ends up picking it up. So we've got two from that. He's managed to thread it through all the fielders on, on the legs there, on his legs. As it Yates is just up top of his mark once again. And and he comes on lamp, worked into the leg side, but not past the fielders this time. And there's one ball remaining, so deep cover comes out to try and get Potts back on strike for the next over. And the final ball of it over, just on legs wide to mid-wicket and that will be me. Thank you very much indeed, Chloe Brewer. We'll see you again in about half an hour. So, so far so good for Dulham. They've seen off the first hour. Haven't scored too many runs, which does mean they'll have to bat on for a while, but if they bat on like this, that might not be a problem. Um, still doing well weather-wise compared to other games. It's still delayed at Chelmsford. No play before lunch at Southampton. Delayed at Trent Bridge. Should be frustrating for Worcestershire. And they are due to start about now at the Oval, which could be a, an important one. They are playing at Cardiff. Uh, lost just one wicket this morning, 67 for two. Another 3-3, 4 to win. And they're playing at Bristol. 
where Gloucestershire 113 for four, need another 385 to beat Yorkshire. No play so far at Leicester. No play before lunch at Northampton. Phil Britt, hello. Good morning, or you know, just, yeah, let's call it morning. Morning, Clive. Morning, everybody. Well, done well. Durham got through the first hour, which I think it's more about just surviving, really, isn't it? Yeah. For the day. Yeah. Craig Miles at the Birmingham end. It's in bright sunshine here. There's great bank of cloud which has gone over the city and to the north of us and thankfully has left Edgebaston alone. And uh, we are bathed in sunshine. It's cold out there though this morning. If you're out of the sun, it's the wind is really chilly. But fortunately, it... Uh, Hasn't deterred a few people coming, but I have to say it's a bit thin, the spectators. This one from Miles is played away into the offside. There's absolutely nobody in front of the wickets on the offside for Craig Miles. Um, the man comes chasing across from mid-on to mid-off to do the fielding, but uh, they scamper through for the single. Another one to Ackerman, 39 for two. I said at the uh, start of the day that even though they made 517, Durham rather gave away a few of their wickets yesterday. So it was never going to be easy for Warwick today. What's of concern is that the lower order batter, Matthew Potts, has not really looked in any trouble at all so no. far. Well, he didn't late. really in the first innings, did he? Yesterday he scored, what, 44 with, from memory? And uh, it looked very solid. Got to do an update in about 15 seconds. You can probably describe this ball. OK, he's miles in, bowls, and this is pushed away into the upside for what will be a couple of more runs for Durham. OK, I'll do my update now. This is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston, where Warwick have been frustrated so far in their pursuit of the eight more wickets they need to win the game. The one plus is they've been playing, that no problems with the weather, despite some rain before the scheduled start of play. But Durham have moved on to 41 for two. They've been scoring at a fairly slow rate, which does mean they will have to bat till beyond T if the weather holds to save the game. But no success for Warwickshire so far. Colin Ackman's on 14. Uh, Matthew Potts on 17. There haven't really been too many alarms for the Durham batters. 41 for 2, this is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston. And you actually haven't missed anything because Miles continues now in and Bowles almost waiting for Clive to finish his uh, report as uh, this one is played away into the offside for another couple of runs. It seems quite a strange plan that we've packed the leg side with fielders and then we're bowling outside the up stump where there's nobody to do the fielding, but they know better than we do. We've got a leg slip, a forward short leg, a man at square leg, a mid wicket, a, a deep backward square leg, and a mid off. And then just in the end, a man in at silly point who's come in in front of the wickets. And we've got a third man, and that's it on the offside. As Miles is in and bowls, and this one has Potts playing. So jumping up and behind the ball and pushing it back down the wicket, Miles running through fields off his own bowling. Barnard had been off the field um, for a while. Down below us, uh, one of the substitute fielders, Garden, is uh, down right down below us at third man. He's on for Rushworth. Uh, Miles again is in and. Uh, aborts his run-up at uh, whether the, he got caught on a crosswind again. It's pretty windy out there now, isn't it? You can see the shirts billowing a bit like it was against Worcestershire when Ollie Hannon Dolby had all the problems with his run-up because of the strong wind. And maybe that Craig Miles is as well. Oh, frustrating for Warwickshire so far, but they were patient yesterday and things eventually happened for them. They need to be patient again today. Yep. Miles, this time it's OK. He's around the wicket and then bounces uh, Potts, who ducks underneath it and it harmlessly through to the keeper. There's no run. Yes, spectator-wise, there might be... In fact, I can see quite a lot of people behind the glass in the David Heath suite at uh, the far end of the ground. So they're watching the cricket from the warm, looking through the windows, and those... Hardy Soul sat outside. There's about 40 or 50 of them. That's all there are. 
We're having a slight fielding change. Nobody coming over to the offside, but uh, we've got now man in what I would have called silly mid on as Miles is in and bowls. And this is driven, driven beautifully into the offside. It ricochets off Davis at short leg and uh, it's going up towards the <laughs> the long off boundary where three men converge on it. Um, doesn't get to the boundary, but it gets three more runs to pots. So three men had to go running from the onside up to cover the ball, go and fetch it up from long off. And well, they haven't started yet at Chelmsford. Essex have declared. Um, so they've set Kent 3.75 to win at Chelmsford. Rather enthusiastically there, one of those guys chasing the ball up to the boundary was the bowler himself, Craig Miles. Been given the ball to throw, didn't he? And yeah. Lobbed to him by Ed Barnard, and Miles got the throw in. 46 for two. So Rob Yates, who's uh, <coughs> four foot in the first innings, was a career best. He only had eight first-class wickets going to this game. He's taken five in this match, including one of this innings yesterday. He's got a slip and a leg slip and a short leg. He's looked the most likely bowler to get a wicket this morning as well. He comes in to bowl to Potts and leans back and guides that into a gap and the short boundary in the offside. Four more runs for Potts is beginning to get going. 50 up for Durham. I'll be counting them off. 131 behind now. That's 38 they've added this morning without loss in the, in the hour we've played. Yates in and that's turned round to the leg side for no run by Potts. He's done, that. done the job that was given to him when he came in towards the end yesterday. Survived yesterday and he's eaten up more valuable time again today from his side's point of view. And he plays back to that tries to work on the leg side, hits him on the thigh pad. Rob Yates collects again. Quite a match, Rob Yates, 191 for the bat. Four wickets, career best with the ball in the first innings. But, uh, well, that one turns in and it's just played late by Potts into the ground, taken by the wicket keeper. It might be a bit churlish to also point out that Rob Yates' analysis was the most expensive by any Warwickshire bowler so far this season in the first innings. He did bowl 42 overs, in fairness. This next one, he gives plenty of air, or it's a full toss, and that uh, is not fully punished by Potts, who hits it out to the sweeper on the offside and gets a single, 51 for two. He's, uh, he's actually is getting a little bit of turn back into the right-hander, so uh, we haven't seen a lot of movement off by anybody else in this game. Breeds for the slow ball certainly might also play a part. That one's played to mid-wicket by Ackerman. Another over is survived by Durham, who are 51 for two. Orange still need eight wickets for victory. Durham need 130 to first avoid the innings defeat. That won't quite be enough to save the game, but I reckon, depending on how quickly they score, they can get to an hour after tea. That, that, that should have done it, you would think. It's now, having said they're going to start at 12 at the Oval, it's now saying start delayed. So that could really frustrate Surrey and their hopes of winning that match. We're very lucky here. Yep. It's one of three grounds where we got play. We've also got play at Cardiff and Bristol at the moment. Bowling change at the Birmingham, Birmingham end. And Craig Miles out of the attack. He uh, didn't have too many overs there this morning. Two or three overs. But uh, Alex Davis has decided to resort to spin at that end and it's going to be Danny Briggs who had a couple of overs last night um, and he's just got the one wicket in the match so far he's going to come on and see if he can get a breakthrough for Warwickshire he's in and bowls and the first ball is Played solidly into the offside. Now we've got a much different field here for uh, for Briggs. We've gone back to uh, four on the offside, 
as this one is Potts drives away out into the covers. He will come back for a second. He's going to take on the arm and gets home safely. It, uh, it's a long way out there towards the Hollies uh, stand boundary and uh, comfortably got home. So he moves overtaken Ackerman as uh, well over ahead of Ackerman as he plays this next one. Sorry, he's yeah, Kai Smith in the deep there. 29 is moved around. Moved on. Had most of the strike in actual fact, hasn't he, this morning? Yeah. Well, that's, I suppose that's his job at this stage. Yep. It goes back and plays this one out to Smith again, who's running around the boundary. So, another single to Potts. Fifty-four for two. As Briggs in and bowls and forward comes uh, Ackerman, pushes it into the onside. So Warwick have got two subs on then, Clive. They've got. It's Lintos on, is he? Or no, um, they've got. They had Garrett on. Oh, did they? <coughs> this one is driven up to mid off. And there's no run. End of an over, 55 for two. Just have a look round and see whether he's, they've just switched. So, Durham will be happy at the moment. Oh, yeah, he's always now leaving the field. As uh, Morris is still toiling for this wicket, so they were patient yesterday. But if Tottenham can get through the first session without losing a wicket, that would be a big step towards saving the game. In comes Yates. Leg slip, forward short leg slip, plays back to that. Ackerman works it through the offside for a single. It's a distinct possibility. There are, there are chances of wins from various teams at the moment. But beyond the bounds of possibility, they have started now, it seems, at the Oval. So somebody ah. will now look to try and force that game. We only had one result across the two divisions of the first round of matches. I guarantee we'll get any in this round. Well, that one's played onto the onside. There's no rum. The game at Trent Bridge looked like it was heading though for an interesting yeah, finish. Obviously, haven't been able to get on. No, there, not so able far. to start, which might frustrate Worcestershire there. Slip a leg, slip a forward <coughs> short leg. Closest mid wicket. Yeah, he's wearing a short sleeve sweater. Comes into ball, gives out a bit of air, and it's driven out to the offside by Potts. It's cut off, long off for no for one run. Fifty-seven for two. Durham trail by 124. Uh, useful runs again from Potts. He contributed well in the first innings and uh, doing the same job again here. It's uh, outscoring Ackerman and ideal foil. Yates goes out on plenty of air again. Ackerman plays not quite out of the middle of the bat, back down the ground. Yates fields off his own bowling. Pauses, walks up, and uh, that one bit of inside edge onto pad. The delivery from Yates, maybe a bit of turn into the batter. He was talking yesterday about, and they are trying to get him to be more of a bowler than he has been. He's been working with Simon Kerrigan, who's here predominantly to work with the academy, but has worked a bit with um, Rob Yates as well. He walks up. Bowls and that's clipped onto the leg side for no run. It's fielded by Ed Barnard. 57 for two at the end of the 28th over. So 18 overs bowled today. They have scored 45 runs in that time. So it's not lightning <coughs> quick, but they have looked pretty solid. Yeah, I don't think. I think survival and uh, Chris occupation is the order of the day for Durham in this one now and uh, try and get out of this game 
with, well, it's not going to be a whole heap of points, but uh, eight for the draw they get and uh, three batting points they got, so they come away with 11. As Briggs starts a new over, and this one is cut away by Potts out to Smith out on the cover boundary, so just for a single. It's got a total on to 58 for two. 32 now he's moved to. Briggs in, and again, this time it's Ackerman playing the same sort of shot out to Smith. So the accumulating runs quite easily here at the moment under no real threat. Danny Briggs so far doesn't appear to have created too much of a threat for anybody. This one is driven by Potts up to a deepish mid-off and uh, shy at the stumps from Davis as Potts arrived back in the crease and was jumping over the ball just in case it rammed into him, but uh, perfectly safe. It was almost like a tip and run there, but uh, he drove, as he, on the move, drove the ball. Briggs in to Ackerman, who plays this one away wristily to mid-wicket. And there's no run. Some dark cloud coming in again from our left as we talk. And the next one, Briggs is in. And forward comes Ackerman, runs it away to short extra cover. There's no run there. The wind really whipping the clouds through quickly. And uh, this one is cut away through backward point and really well fielded by Craig Miles diving down to his right. Um, getting up with mud all over his flannels, or over his whites, and getting a pat on the back for his troubles, and just flexing his knee as if to say, well, that hurt. But it was the final ball of the over that squeezed through for the single. 61 for two. Durham. And we've had now uh, 19 overs this morning. And have survived uh, just the 10 last night, so we're now at 29 in the innings. 77 remain in the day. Rob Yates to bowl from the pavilion end. A short cover goes in, he's got a square leg and a slip. That's, uh, Ackerman plays back to that and hits Alex Davis in that short cover position on the shin and rolls away. There is one run. Picks up the ball with both feet, Davis, but then doesn't catch it as he flicks it in the air. 62 for 2, Durham. At the moment, looking pretty untroubled. Well, which will hope that one wicket might start making other things happen. But where's that wicket coming from? Yates comes in the bowl, and it's pushed out to the onside by Potts for no run. Durham down in this part of the world again for a match starting on Friday when they go to Kidderminster to play uh, Worcestershire. In comes... Yes, gives that plenty of air and it's whipped away into the offside by Potts. Sweeper out there, it's a single. 63 for two. I assume they'll get back on the coach tonight, go home, come back here, Thursday. Probably. It's just a bit too long, isn't it, to hang around in between? Again, Yates lo lobs that one up and it's played back to him, there's no run. Warwickshire will be going off down to the south coast and they'll be playing Hampshire. This one has oh, gone through, he's appealing, well they're appealing for everything there I think. I'm wondering quite how it missed the stumps, it's gone through, it's going to be leg buys, um, two of them. Actually from the umpire, is he signaling leg buys or buys? Let's wait and see, he's waiting to see. Yeah. That'll be it, his leg buys. Um, it's got through there from Yates. A little bit of turn there for him, I think. Cause, uh, again, it definitely getting causing more problems than any of the other bowlers. And, uh, just got to keep be patient and keep that line keep troubling, <coughs> troubling the right two right-handers. Yates is in. That's four defensive from Ackerman. There's no rum. Oliver Hannon-Dolby back on the field. Ned Barnard decides it's his turn to go off. 
Gosh, gosh, they're on and off this field, these guys. It's uh, been like this for the last uh, couple of days. 65 for two then, Durham. So no loss of a wicket this morning. They've survived an hour and 20 minutes now. As they look to frustrate Warwickshire. And restrict them to a draw. Draw would give Warwickshire 15 points. Which would put them on 28 points from their first two drawn games. Here at Edgbaston. Which will put them probably in a healthy position in the table after two matches. But they'd love a win. At the moment, being completely frustrated as Briggs starts a new over. And this is uh, sees Potts trying to force it away through mid wicket, but uh, the ball to his pads and uh, runs down just behind square as everything goes flying off. Hats, and there's a real gust of wind that's just taken the bales off, it's taken the helmets off. Uh, where it was put down and there's caps flying everywhere. Gosh, that was a strong blast. It's certainly worth just checking the bales at the non-strikers then. I think they stayed on. Yeah, the, the helmet which is behind Will Rhodes went flying and then the caps of uh, Kai Smith and uh, Dan Mosley both followed it. This next one is from Briggs. He's played back by Potts. He didn't get blown away, he was fine. But, uh, it's got a bit grey overhead as well, as this one is short outside the off stump and cracked away through uh, extra cover. Smith goes across and does a good tumbling stop. Sorry, but, uh, but two more runs, so takes the total onto 67 for two. As Briggs in again, bowls, and it's driven up to long off, uh, but Davis does the fielding, and there's no run. Nothing really happening for Warwickshire this morning. There was always a danger this would be the case, despite the flurry of wickets, six wickets falling in the final session yesterday. Briggs in. And Potts is solidly behind that, punching it back up, and Briggs runs across and fields off his own bowling. 67 for 2, 19 to Ackerman, 36 to Potts, who's had a large proportion of the strike, and he goes for... Ooh. This one pops a little bit, just given a bit more air, and pitched, and uh, Potts went to cut it, and the ball popped over the top of his, uh, of his bat, through to the keeper, who took it at shoulder height, and... End of another over. Certainly had 15 wickets in the match for about 1,300 runs. So it is not proving easy to prize batters out. Rob Yates will persist. I did miss he was aching a bit by the end of yesterday. I should think he was. Still you, a bit you, to work. He usually gets five or six overs, doesn't he? If, if at the most, if you look at it, towards the end of an innings. He's in there, and Ackerman plays back to that, plays it to the offside for no run. He's gonna. Uh, they're gonna get their money's worth out of him if he's opening the batting every week and bowling large chunks of overs. Right on over four defensive by Ackerman. Despite a shout or two, there were no alarms with that shot. It's one for 17 in his 10th over, so he's not conceding runs, but he's not getting wickets today either. Quicker ball, and that's uh, he will concede runs there, but not four because it's well stopped. Is that Danny Briggs out in the short, sweep, yep. brandy sweeper position? Makes a very good stop, and what would have otherwise been a four is just a single for Ackerman. He's on to 20. 68 for 2. And that was driven nicely down the ground by Potts. There'll be runs there for him. He's on to 40. And it's 72 for 2. So the night watchman 
That's uh, doing a bit more than the job he was brought in to do. He's uh, continuing to show form. 44 yesterday and uh, another 40 today, so uh, good runs for Potts. That was a forward defensive back to Yates. Off drops back to the boundary, Yates into bowl, and Potts steers that to square leg for a single, end of the over, another over ticked off by Durham, 73 for two, they'll be doing this perhaps in half hour sessions, they get to half twelve and then they'll be thinking can we get to lunch without any loss at all. Well it's been a good hour and a half for Durham so far, we've uh, We've had 22 overs, and Durham have added 61 runs <coughs> in that hour and a half. And more importantly, they've lost no further wickets. And Warwickshire a bit frustrated in terms of... Uh, they've had one or two shots, but nothing really. There's been... Uh, I don't think there's been any catches uh, offered or any p chances. There's been a couple which have bit the pads. Briggs starts a new over from the Birmingham end. He's in and bowls. And uh, it's punched out into the offside by Potts. There's no run. Come on, I've got a third Derbyshire wicket. So they're seven wickets away from victory. <coughs> Derbyshire's only 318 more to win. Briggs in and forward comes Potts and defends that up back to the bowler. But none of the match is really moving on all that much so far on this final day. light has improved again it's so uh, that some of that clouds blown through so one good thing is that the cloud is moving so fast with this wind that it's getting the rain it'll probably blow through quickly this one driven back to Briggs who feels off his own bowling so feels got quite Matt. defensive to pots now wasn't it although yeah. he's just putting an extra fielder Bring most in mid on position <laughs> He's in and bowls, and then Potts turns it into the mid-wicket area, but straight to Yates, who's at mid-wicket. Then goes for a little walk. Briggs in again, bowls. This is hit back into the ground, and Briggs takes it. But uh, again, an aggressive shot from Potts, but uh, not timed. And another short extra cover has come in for him as he's lifted this one well, that's not anywhere near short extra cover that's somewhere halfway up the stands over to uh, the uh, to the left as we look down and uh, now the crowd well I say the crowd the, the, there isn't a crowd there's a few people in the stands one of them has moved across gentleman in a blue top has moved across to a whole bank of empty seats and fetch the ball from about 10 rows up and six runs takes Potts to six uh, to 47 and the total onto 79 for two pick that up and uh, hit that beautifully 20 seconds six of the match oh, should hit 10 in the first and he's done them 11 and, uh, Potts hit two in the first innings short boundaries there's a chance for sixes Kai Smith's cap has blown off again as Rob Yates. The flagpole is absolutely yeah. being pulled off. The flag's trying to, it's almost bending the flagpole itself over. Yates, and that's turned now, was well stopped there by <laughs> Jacob Bethel. Um, that short leg. No run. There's uh, Yates. Plugging away, comes in again. Can they get something before lunch again? It's hit into the ground and fielded by Bethel. He hasn't bowled too much in this game. He hasn't bowled for a long time, having missed most of the last season as a bowler because of a, a fracture in his back. And that one is uh, played out to the offside for a single. 80 for two. Durham. In 
comes Yates. That's a quicker ball. Bit of an inside edge from Potts, but safe enough along the ground to Craig Miles at mid wicket. And Durham will be thinking now half an hour to lunch. Get there without any loss, and that'll be a big, big step towards saving this game. Not quite be there yet, but in a very sound position. Yates bowls, and that's pushed out to the onside for no run. There's not a lot happening out there for Warwickshire. <laughs> no, there's, n there's generally not been a lot happening out there for three no, days, has there really? No. Wind is blowing strong, isn't mm. it? Uh, temporary sight screen is blowing. That's pushed out on the offside because we're quite a long way to the left in terms of the where the pitch is and have these white tarpaulin sight screens. And the top bit, which is covering some windows there, is, is struggling to stay in place end of the over 81 for 2 Durham and a bit of a conflab a bit of a committee meeting going on there Dan Mosley joins it to offer his Two pennies worth of Ed oh. Barlow. We haven't seen Ed Barlow actually bowl yet. Did you see what happened there? There's a hat blown off. Steve has shown us his hat's blown off. And Craig Miles makes a big play of making a spectacular diving stop but to retrieve off, the umpire's hat. Blowing off with it, sun, two pairs of sunglasses, which Bethel's retrieved. Yes. Not sure wearing that sort of hat in this wind. It might be better like wearing a woolly hat. Mm. Anyway, he's popped it back on his head. It's like winter out there today, isn't it? Yes, it is. It was uh, biting wind when I was walking around from the car park. Yeah. A bit of sleet, even. Yeah. Yes, I heard the sleet on the hotel bedroom window today. That was just before the bin lorry came and parked right outside and emptied loads of skips. Briggs bowling around the wicket here to Potts, is on 48. Does have a, I think an 87. I said yesterday was his highest score, didn't it? 81 against North Hans. Next ball is pushed away. Back up towards the bowler's end. Briggs again round the wicket. Pots forward. Big stride forward this time to snuff that one out on the length. Well, this match sprung to life in the final session yesterday, but it's, it seems to have gone back into its slumber, which will suit Durham. Next ball is edged down towards backward point. Miles picks it up, no run there. He's had three fifties so far, Matthew Potts. Briggs again, and he's defended. really the finish yesterday when you think that 13 wickets have fallen in the match this is the seventh session of the match it's played off towards point miles tries to grab it one-handed but inadvertently kicks it along the floor up towards the far side of the square correction it's the tenth session of the match and we've had seven wickets fall in nine of those sessions in total and uh, just six in that one session so his half century he's got 53 not out against uh, Derbyshire in 2017 that was his debut year you may recall that was one of the years where we had a general election uh -huh. and he made his debut for Durham at Canterbury on the day of the general election which was Theresa May's I think it was her snap general election back then he got 81 against Northampton in 2021, and last year 64 against Derbyshire in July. Have to scuttle away from the cricket when that happens, so I can report on account. I did with yeah. that election, I think, somewhere. I can't remember where now. Anyway, in comes Rob Yates to uh, bowl, and that's played back to him. There's no run. 82 for two. The last, the last one was in December, wasn't it? Uh, December the 19th or something yeah, it's like that. The 16th. Then, yeah. No. Could get one this summer. 
Who knows? Yates comes into ball, and that is short. And it's hit in the air, but uh, he's got it over the inner field pot, so he'll get a couple of runs. This is 50. Brings up a half century then for Matthew Potts. 97 balls. So, four fours and one six, you might have heard announced there. And it is his fourth first class half century. Yates balls to him and he plays that to mid on. There's no run. Comes in again. Running out of time if they to get anything before lunch. A forward defensive by Potts onto the onside. Down Mosley Fields. There's no run. Even one before lunch might just give him a bit of a lift, but not much sign of it coming. Yates. Quicker balls. Hit again. A little uppishly by Potts, but again, hit it hard enough really to take the close in fielders out of the equation unless it goes straight at them. Craig Miles fields at mid wicket, there's no rum. Again, Tinky with the field. Rob Yates puts the fielder right by the pitch at mid on. Comes into bowl, gives it a bit of air, just goes past that fielder along the ground uh, for four runs to uh, Potts. That's the end of the over. Let's bring Chloe in for a little stint before lunch so she can earn her free lunch. She'll join <laughs> that Martin Emerson. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Our English teacher used to have a poster on his wall in the English class of that. There's no such thing as a free lunch. There was a section of fish, one fish behind another, bigger than the one in front, and so on and so on. Bit of a discussion going on here before the new over begins. Ackerman on 21, Potts on 55, 88 for two. So the deficit is uh, now 93. Briggs round the wicket from the city end, bowling to Ackerman, who is forward to defend that one. You've been for a little wonder? Went for a little wonder. Of Went for a little wonder and found Just a couple of Speak up a bit, because, uh, yeah, go on, move that microphone there, that's it. Yeah. yeah, go on. All good? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. That one's pushed out into the covers. Yeah, well everybody's got different headsets, so it's trying to balance <laughs> the, uh, mine's too loud now. It's just trying to balance all the headsets against each other. Briggs in sunshine bowling here as Ackerman plays this along the floor to mid-wicket. We've had a few heavy showers just drifting around the north of Birmingham. So far, uninterrupted play. Equally, Durham have stood firm. Ackerman cuts this one. It's gone to Miles, a backward point, no run there. Yeah, it was a little bit more blue sky than I was earlier. But hopefully, we'll stay, we'll stay dry here at Edgebaston. Breaks in again. And the ball played off towards... Uh, Deep point for one by Ackerman. So there's no play at Essex today. They're due to start at 1.40. Hampshire Lancashire delayed at the Rose Bowl. No play before lunch. No play at Trent Bridge between Knotts and Worcestershire. That's delayed due to rain. They have got going between uh, Somerset and Surrey. As, uh, Potts defends this one from Briggs. That is the end of the over. So uh, Somerset in their second innings, 232 for six. So they lead by 89 runs. Glamorgan and Derbyshire still playing in Cardiff. Derbyshire need another 300 runs to win. They're in their second innings at 101 for three. Yorkshire playing Gloucestershire in Bristol. And uh, Gloucestershire are in their second innings. And they are... It won't give me the score, I can't see that. There's a th uh, I'll pull that down there. No. 
There's a stupid little clicky button thing in the road. Um, <laughs> where are Gloucestershire? Gloucestershire, 145 for four. Need 353 to win. And, uh, Leicestershire, no play there at the moment. And North Hans, no play there either. So the rain has basically come behind us. There was a big bank of rain came through. Birmingham about 7 o'clock this morning and that's drifting across the country as we speak towards the south and there's more rain to the north and east but at the moment we are in a little pocket getting away with it <laughs> yeah quite sunny at the moment so hopefully it stays this way for a little while at least Yates is it to pull from the pavilion and and that's hit a pad shout from fielders, but umpire's not interested. That pitched quite a long way outside the line of off stump there. Yeah, definitely worth a shout if it hits the pads. But umpire very uninterested. Yates comes in again, full of a length, and that's a wicket, off he goes! Middle stump. Middle stump. Ackerman, 22, he's out. So he Just played right around that. Yeah, he did. 89 for three, and that's the first wicket of the day, and that will definitely put the Warwickshire players in a very good mood, and that's one out of eight they need today. Let's watch the replay there. He's gone back into the crease. The ball stayed fairly low, and it's taken the middle stump out the ground. Yeah. He's just looked to play back through mid-wicket there. He's given himself a little bit of room. So, yeah. It's jagged back in quite a way as well. I think it might have hit the foot mark. Breakthrough from uh, Warwickshire's point of view, though. They've been toiling away this morning looking for something, and Durham, importantly, are still 92 runs behind at 89 for three. David Beddingham coming in now. Just the sort of player who could bat all day. Yeah, that's definitely the type of player you need, especially in this scenario. Durham really just needs to bat the overs out. So Rob Yates, until this match, only had eight wickets in his career, and he's now got uh, four for 137 in the first, <laughs> and he's taken two for 31 in the second. So he's nearly doubled his career haul in this one game. <laughs> That's definitely not bad going. I'm sure he'll be given a little bit more of a chance to take a couple more after this game, then. What did I say Ackerman was on 22? Yeah. Yeah. So the partnership was worth 79 for the third wicket. And the night watchman is still in. <laughs> He's got a half century. <laughs> yeah, that's not normally how it goes, but it is cricket. So Yates just out of his mark, ready for the new batter, Beddingham. And first one was outside off, and he's pushed it back. He's gone with quite hard hands outside off. Head in hands there from like slipping keeper there as Yates comes in again. Fourth ball of the over, and that's worked off bending his legs. And he's off mark for his first run of the day. That's what you want to see as a, as a bowling side. When a batter comes in, they've pushed it on outside off with a slip in. Yeah, Yates was getting the ball to move a bit yesterday. It's a day four pitch, but it's not offered much to the bowlers at all, really. No, it hasn't You've seen got three on the leg side. You've got two leg slips and a short leg for Potts. <laughs> Yates, again, outside, off defended by Potts there. Yeah, they're really looking for a turn here, aren't they? We've, we've stuck one of them. Short legs over to a short cover under the lead as Yates comes in. Final ball of it over and Potts has just pulled away. Someone must have been nattering around him. Yeah, he's just pretending for his top of mark. Another go at his last, last ball of the over. And that's defended 
Right into the leg side, mid wicket picks up and that brings Envy over. So, wicket over, Durham now 90 for free, Beddingham is at the new batter on one and Potts remains on 55. Where's that weather when you need it? <laughs> Greying <laughs> over again towards the northwest. <laughs> But uh, it's almost like the Simpsons sky to the east of us, isn't it? Fluffy white clouds <laughs> yeah, and a bit of blue on show. <laughs> yeah, no, it's quite a, quite a difference from left to right here. So I'm just going to keep on looking on the right side of us and it'll be fine. If you want to get in touch, we are cricket at yahoo.co.uk or at Marty Cricket on Twitter. Got a few emails coming in. It's Briggs Bowles to Beddingham. That's played into the covers. John Hutchison's email. Greetings from a breezy Bolton. Where we had a huge hailstorm this morning. Yes, I think a lot of people did. 90 for three. Br Briggs starts his run up twice there and something's <laughs> put him off both times. And now it might be that Steve O'Shaughnessy she said, I need to take my hat off before it blows in your face. So he now has. Briggs bowls, Beddingham flicks this through, short mid-wicket, and it should go all the way for four because it's only a 50-yard boundary, and it does. It was just tantalising that one as Rob Yates chased it. It just had that little bit of momentum. He just couldn't quite get, the, get on the ball. John says, apologies for the late show, but I have uh, have plenty of graft on today. Just switched on to see Ackerman go. Hopefully I'm not the Jonah, he says. Briggs again. Beddingham cuts past point. Could be two runs here. He's got one. He'll stay for one. Miles is on it and he's throwing it back to the keeper. One bounce. John says, I need Bedders and Potts to straight bat everything now and hopefully cling on for a draw. Hope you wintered well. Still feels like winter, John. <laughs> Briggs to Potts, that skids in low and Potts pushes it out into the offside safely, no run Dr Dan emailed earlier when he did email this was the only first division game that was actually taking place, Every, everybody was off for the rain as Potts plays this one up to mid on, no run and he sent a sketch of Potts hitting the first four of the day bat Durham he says Briggs, two pots. Potts plays the ball into the ground and it loops up to uh, short mid-off. And that is the end of the over. 95 for three here on the BBC. I can see spots of rain on the window. Oh, yeah. Can you see them? Mm, yeah. I think, Little though, ones. I think the worst of the c approaching cloud is again going to miss us. It looks like it's raining on mm. the far side of Birmingham. We're right on the southern cusp of it. Yeah, I think we might be lucky. There's quite a big patch of blue sky coming towards us, though, which is quite promising. Yeah. Yeah, it's what's behind it, that's the issue. <laughs> yeah. Try not to look that far. <laughs> You'll be on the blue. So, Beddingham, the new batter to face Yates, who continues. This is 14th over. And four people in and around the bat as he comes for his first ball of over outside oh, of the left leave. alone. Very good leave. He looked very tempted by that as well. Dr. Kevin Tennant says, I was really hoping the rain would close this game down. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately not. Not quite. Yeah, it's again for the length and that's worked to mid on there and they just sneak a single from it they're just rotating the strike there Mikey Mike says he slept on his rain prayer mat during the night and David says he's hoping for rain <laughs> I feel like a lot of Durham Durham, Durham may not need the rain at all they could quite easily bat out the day <laughs> they could yeah and again that's just watching the leg side dot ball Yeah, it's just up top of his mark. Again, just a bit of change of field. Mid wicket's been 
brought in a little bit closer and deep, mid, deep squares come into a mid wicket as well. As it, yeah, it comes in a full of length and that's driven handsomely through the covers and that will be for That's a beautiful shot by nice Box. Nice wasn't it? Yeah, it was a lovely shot. Chris Tavare-esque, that. Mm. One for our older listeners. Have you heard of Chris Tavare? I'll have to look him up on a be some grainy footage on YouTube somewhere, <laughs> no doubt. And that is 100 up for Durham as well, so we are now 100 for free. As it, yeah, it comes in again, short of length, and that's been pulled into the side, and that will be four again. He's latched onto that ever so quickly. He's seen it short and got back and pulled it o over towards that long boundary there. Well, they now trail by 77. Yeah, they're tickling, ticking along nicely, aren't they? Ten minutes to luncheon. Yeah, we're just making their way. After lunch, would you want to see a change in pace from Durham? or? I, I think they've just got to just, just keep ticking along. Yeah. Things are working for them at the moment. Mm. Yeah, but really well actually what are you looking I've seen how many people are in the ground so yeah, sprinkling yeah it's again just on length and that's worked to mid wicket there double to finish over Durham and now 104 for free there's a few indoors at the far end I don't blame them to be honest no, Colts very much the order of the day today as well <laughs> yeah Couple of hats, a couple of bobby hats in there. Dan Mosley's going to have a twirl. I think he only bowled the one over in the first innings, but got a got a wicket with it. And 1.5 overs, one for nine. His sunglasses on. <laughs> no, I was just thinking about it. It is quite bright out there. Mm. The sun's really shining now. Well, that blue sky that you're on about is right above us now. Yeah, it's glorious, that. I would say it's Spaghetti Junction. It's pouring down. <laughs> but not here. <laughs> yeah. I can stay over Spaghetti Junction as well. Mostly bowling to Bellingham. First ball is thumped back along the floor to him. Did you say you do you live around here somewhere now then, do you? So I live more towards the Worcester side of Birmingham. Right. Uh, it's about 20 minutes away. It's played away by Beddingham on the floor, so what, are you over sort of Hales Owen way or somewhere around there? Yeah, yeah, roughly around there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's nice. It's quite nice to be in the city, but not quite in the centre. Ball that comes in again, and this is defended by Beddingham. Length ball. It's a nice little village, just to, if you come off the north junction for mm. Bromsgrove, and instead of going into Bromsgrove, you go over that hill. Begin with a B. Quite a nice place mm -hmm. over there. That's thumped high and long by Benningham. And it's come down in the seats. In the, uh, oh, there's the wind. It's only been hit by a hurricane here. <laughs> it's gone for six anyway, in the... <laughs> The wired stand. Yeah, Durham just making a bit of a dent in this, this just before lunch here. <laughs> gonna look it up. I'm trying to remember what it is. Because <laughs> my mate lived down here for a while and he was okay. always talking about wanting to buy a house there. There's lots of nice little villages around Bromsgrove. Mm. The Licky Hills. Yeah, no, they're really pretty actually. You've ever gone for a walk there? Well, I've got relatives who live in Blackwell, so okay. it's nice. And, uh, cycling down the Todd Big Flight, Cat's Hill. That's quite nice, isn't it? Barn Green, some nice places there. Got a cousin in Stoke Prior. 
I'm trying to think what the name of this place is. <laughs> it's a two pronged name. Bell Broughton, that's what I'm thinking of. Oh, okay. I'll that's where my mate wanted to live. He's back up in the northeast now, anyway, so he <laughs> never fulfilled his dream. Mosley, right arm over to Beddingham, who thumps the ball off the shins of Silly Point, Kai Smith. And he's got the pads on and shin pads, and it ricochets back towards the stumps. We're nearly at lunch now as well, aren't we? It's mm. uh, four minutes to go to lunch. So Durham 110 for three, so they're 71 behind now, following on. Betting in with a cut, and that goes wide of first slip, and it's down to vacant third man for four. Second slip would have snaffled that quite comfortably. As it is, there wasn't one there. So he was able to play with a little bit of width and freedom. And on that note, 114 for three. I'm going to have to uh, head next door. We'll have to attract the attention of Mr. Eakin. <laughs> Is he putting his lottery <laughs> numbers on, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, checking the old numbers. So 114, 4 3. One over, I would imagine, before lunch. They might squeeze two in with the spinners on, but they're having a bit of a conversation, so perhaps not. I'll see you again this afternoon. Perfect. Well, there we go. That blue patch we were on about is right above us now. We even. Over where that rain was earlier, it seems like it was just blue sky sweeping across the sea for a little bit. As Yates is on for his 15th over, full of length, and that's driven a little inside edge there to mid of a wicket there. We've continued with four people around the bat, two and a half in front, and two behind. As Yates comes in again. On the left, and that's worked to Midwicket there. Who picks it up and sends it back in. And yeah, he's getting through his so foot quite quickly. As is his third ball full of left. And oh, that's gone through keeper and leg slip there, and it's rolling towards the boundary. As it's been. Cut off there. I think they've. Yeah, it's just. I think I might have run a free there, if I'm honest. I didn't see, to be honest. <laughs> 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 I was busy watching the ball. <laughs> I think they ran a free. Um, putting him. He's just at checking his guard as Yates is ready for his fourth ball of the over and <laughs> waiting for Slip to return from the boundary. He comes on and length, worked into the leg side of our mid wicket, picks up and sends it back in for the fifth ball here. Yeah, it's full of length and that's defended to a short cover there who's under a helmet. Helmet and shin pads. Well, one more ball for Durham to survive. I'd love to have got him with no wickets down, but one wicket down, they're still looking pretty solid. Yeah, they'll definitely take that, I should imagine. As Yates comes in, short of length and worked into the leg side. And they've taken two from it. I'm sure that'll be the... Well, no, sneaking one more in. Well, let's see when the. Obviously, Warwickshire are keen to get another win in, but let's see what the umpire decides when he gets. Uh, it is one o'clock on every clock I can see, and indeed, Richard Lugworth, okay. who did walk at the pace of a particular. Oh, actually, Stephen Shaughnessy, I do with just as he did walk at the pace of a particularly slow League Two <laughs> defender. <laughs> um, uh, and has decided that time is up. So that's lunch. 119 for three. So a good session for Durham. Well, they scored 107 runs for the loss of just one wicket. 
And they are not safe yet, but they've taken a big step towards it. Thank you, Clubby. We'll I've got to do an update shortly, but we'll be back after lunch. This is Clive Inc. at Edgbaston, where Warwickshire are having to work hard in search of a victory against Durham in this county championship match. Durham 119 for three at lunch. So Warwickshire have taken one wicket, but Durham had just 62 runs behind Warwickshire's first innings total. The one success going to Rob Yates, his sixth wicket of the match. He bowled Colin Ackerman for 22, but other than that, the Durham batters have looked fairly untroubled. Matthew Potts on 66, David Bellingham on 19. Seven more wickets. It's needed by Warwickshire. It's going to be some ask. Durham 119 for three at lunch. This is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston.
scores from other matches taking place around the country today. Starting first of all, that was the utility of Bob Southampton, where Hampshire are playing Lancashire. Hampshire 367, Lancashire 484. Hampshire in their second innings, 44 for 2. Hampshire trailed by 73 runs with 8 wickets in hand. At the count for Northampton, the match between Northamptonshire and Middlesex. Northamptonshire declared their first innings close on 552 for 6. And in reply, Middlesex were 553 for 2 at the close of play yesterday. There's been no play there this morning. At the Cloud Camp Ground, Chelmsford, the match between Essex and Kent. Essex declared their first innings closed on 530 for 7 and then dismissed Kent for 413. Essex then declared their second innings closed on 257 for 4. Kent required 375 runs. At the Sea of Unique Stadium, Bristol, the match between Gloucestershire and Yorkshire, Yorkshire were dismissed in their first innings for 326, and then Gloucestershire were dismissed for 263. Yorkshire then declared their second innings closed on 434 for 6. In their second innings at Lumps, Gloucestershire are 166 for 4 requiring a further 332 runs. At Sapphire Gardens, Cardiff, the match between Glamorgan and Derbyshire. Glamorgan were dismissed in their first innings for 237, and they dismissed Derbyshire for 198. Glamorgan then declared their second innings closed on 361 for seven, and at lunch, Derbyshire are 128 for three, requiring a further 273 runs. At Trent Bridge, Nottingham and Shear were dismissed for 399 in their first innings, and then dismissed Worcestershire for 355. In their second innings, Nottingham and Shear are 151 for seven, Lunch is to be taken with an inspection for follow. Nottinghamshire lead by 195 runs with three wickets remaining. At the Kia Oval, the match between Surrey and Somerset. Somerset 285 and Surrey in their first innings were dismissed for 428. In their second innings, Somerset are 252 for six leading by 109 runs. And the match at the Upton Steel County Ground Leicester, where Leicestershire are playing Sussex, the match has been abandoned as a draw.
So welcome back to Edgbaston and the umpires more careful for Richard anyway still look as if he's got like eight layers on. After that or he's enjoyed the um the pudding at lunch a bit too much. Um uh, he's well wrapped up to the cold, because even with the sunshine, it's still pretty cold. So, Durham hoping to continue. They didn't quite get through unscathed in the morning session, but only the loss of one wicket. So, Warwickshire still needs seven more. And Durham scored... What did they score? They scored 107 runs in that session. If they repeat that in the uh, afternoon session, then they will by then have a lead of between 50 and 60 which won't make them safe but I'm still, I'm still looking at about an hour after tea if they can bat that long they will be surely safe I'm Clive Eakin, Chloe Brewer with this
Nice lunch. Yeah, no, went good. down the track. Always good food at Urge Pasta. Excellent, yeah. Which is good. Oh, I we say dry during the session. What are the players' lunches like for you when you when you play here? Pretty good, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah, food at Urge Pasta is always great, if I'm honest. So I don't think I've ever had a bad meal oh, here. Very good. And you eat a lot in the interval uh, during the game? Cause if, Not really, because no, if we're batting second, I normally have to run off, eat a little bit, stick my pads on and go back out. Uh. <laughs> so, I sometimes take some for after. Ah, uh, stick it in your bag, yeah. That's where the trick is, take a plate <laughs> and stick it by your kit. <laughs> um. oh, we're going to see Jacob Bethel into the bowling um, after lunch oh, she didn't really get any joy from the new ball today Got a little bit yesterday but not today so it's been mainly spin Jacob Bethel hasn't bowled yet Warwick's used eight bowlers in the first innings Bethel's the seventh bowler they used in the second the only bowler they haven't used they used in the first of course is Chris Rosworth who's not available due to injury Can they get these seven wickets? Tall order. But, at an interval, sometimes intervals make things happen. Mm, that's the thing, isn't it? When you come back from an interval, batters have to kind of reset themselves and get themselves back into the game mode. So it's Bethel from the Birmingham. There is a grey cloud overhead. Mm. I think it's certainly too much at the moment. Left arm round the wicket. Oh, that one seemed to keep a bit low. It's solid enough play by Pods. Not sure how much that got up. They have finally started at Chelmsford, but Essex have two sessions basically to try and bowl Kent out. After setting in what is now an unlikely 375 to win. In comes Bethel to bowl. That's solidly defended. The one I think is most interesting is at the Oval where. Somerset got through the morning session without losing a wicket, with still only 109 ahead of Surrey with four wickets left. Still plenty to play for on that one. Hampshire hanging on. That's Southampton 60 for three, still 57 behind Lancashire's first in his total. In comes Bethel Potts, pushes out on the offside. There's no run. And still no play at Trent Bridge, where it looks like Worcestershire are going to be thwarted by the weather. They had a chance of winning that today, but... And Rain has now intervened at Cardiff, where Derbyshire got through for the loss of two wickets in the morning session, so that could scupper Glamorgan. Bethel bowls, and that's pushed out to mid-off. There's no run. Yorkshire are playing, but not getting much success against Gloucestershire at Bristol. Gloucestershire, 166 for four. Still need 3-3-2 three, three, to win, so Yorkshire will still hope there. And we have the first two results stroke non-results as Bethel comes in to bowl and that's uh, why and he did cut it a little bit Potts which is why there's a bit of excitement and they're giving up at Leicester as Adrian Harms predicted earlier Leicestershire versus Sussex so that is a draw and they're giving up at Northampton where Middlesex were 5-5-3 five, five, for two in their first innings that has now been declared a draw as well uh, obviously due to the weather let's push that back to the border there's no run So, where's this one going, Chloe? Is this just going to drift, or can Warwickshire make things happen, do you think? Oh, it's tough, isn't it? Cause we've still got seven wickets to go in a day, and don't really aren't really giving them anything uh -oh. to get onto. They're not giving them many chances. But I was just kept a little bit low, so we might see something happen in this session um, for Warwickshire. But you never know with cricket, some weird and wonderful things happen. And Yates is to continue again from a pavilion and carry on from where he left off before lunch. And it's a pretty similar field to before, someone in short leg, leg slip normal step all around about as Yates comes in for his first ball after lunch and has a little inside edge to mid -wicket. he's gone to drive that he's left cover open and he's turning it a fair bit now back in towards 
of Asa as he comes through a second ball of it over. Full of eleven now driven this time. Diving stop from Yates. And another dot ball. Any over so far. As he comes in for his third ball full of lamp and defended there from Beddingham. What would you like to see this afternoon? That's a real question. Well, what should happen? They've obviously got to get some wickets this, this session. Um, I need to get them almost all out by the end. Yes, worked into a legs off a five foot. Miscommunication slightly, but... Durham have been slight sports sports by not playing some of the wild shots they played <laughs> yesterday. Even though they got to 517, they did lose wickets to some loose shots. <laughs> but they're playing it, of course, absolutely right from their point of view. That's not making it any easier for Warwickshire. Yeah, it's short of length, and that's gone off a shin of a short leg for another dot ball. This is the final ball of the over. Five dots so far. And a single to finish off. Defended towards a deep cover there from Beddingham, who keeps the strike. And that's Durham at 120 for free. Yep, yeah, every over that ticks by makes Durham feel better. A minimum. Of 62 overs remains there because with the spinners on so much, they might get a few extra in. That's always something you have to be slightly wary of when you're talking about the number of overs left in the day. Been caught like that, like that before. I remember a game at <laughs> Liverpool, and of course, being an outground, was a great outground, but the information was a little bit lacking in places. Mm. And Warwick were hanging on for a draw, and there was something like eight or nine wickets down, I think. They got to what I thought was the last over. I thought, there it is, they've done it, they've got the draw. Brilliant, so we'll <laughs> get the draw and we'll see you again. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> they're still playing. They're, they were still in the final round, they still had a couple of overs to go. But they got the draw in the end, so all was well. <laughs> Bethel comes into bowl to David Bellingham. Round the wicket. And that's played back to no, no run. Not quite as bad as the. Uh, T20 commentary only, I think the second year or might be the third year of T20 mm -hmm. in uh, Warwickshire as they were happily called then in the T20 um, played Surrey at the Oval in the quarter final that one is just guided to backward point there's no run and it was the relatively early days of Duckworth Lewis mm -hmm. and we got to the final ball and we all thought that Surrey needed two to win they duly ran the two the umpires thought that that meant they won and all the players went off, Surrey celebrated and I've signed off, handed back to the studio mm. on our commentary as Bethel comes in to bowl. And it's played uh, to through mid-wicket for four runs by Beddingham. And every runs are valuable for Durham. It takes them closer. So, but then it transpired the umpires had got it wrong. They told Surrey you need two more to win. But in fact, two got them a tie, not a win. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, and so there was about half an hour of arguing and phone calls to lords and all sorts mm. before they had to come out and do a bowl out. So I had to <laughs> ring up the studio saying, "Can you um, can you leave this music program and come back to me?" <laughs> of course, they yeah, lost the uh, bowl out in the end anyway, so it was all a bit of a waste of time. That's a forward defensive. There's no run. <laughs> yes, uh. that's a great story. Yes, yeah, it's a bit of a problem. The umpires don't know the rules, to be honest. But there we are. Um, he tries to turn that around his pants. Oh, but it comes back on his off the wicket keeper onto his body, and it almost rolls out into the stumps. But I don't suppose that would have mattered, would it? Because it came mm. off the wicket keeper. So no alarms. And uh, in it comes and pushes out to the offside. There's no run. That's also the thing with spinners, because they get through that over so quickly, you keep on facing balls and you look up and all your overs have half gone for not too many runs. Just like, keep on getting through that over so quickly. But it's definitely more of an issue in limited over games rather than here, it might just add a couple on to the end of the day. Yeah. 
brisk breeze blowing. Mm. Yeah, the players look cold actually. Yes. <laughs> Lots of hands in pockets. Yeah, EA's in full of lab and that's driven out to a vacant point. And that is a four runs to start me over. You were hand warmers in the pockets, oh, fielder. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my hands get so cold. What's that say? Cold hands, cold hands, warm heart. Oh, is that it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go well, with that I think My hands are usually warm. I don't know why that's the Yeah, he's in again, full of lamp, defended back to him this time. Yeah, hand warmers this time of year are absolutely essential to be on the field, if I'm honest. We were lucky we played on Friday, and that was. A couple of girls got burnt, actually. Oh, dear. I know. Yates again, outside, worked into a leg side. And a sneaky single. Um, yeah, it's, I think it just caught a couple of people off guard. Yeah, it, often it, was, does. it was nice and sunny, a bit of a breeze. And um, yeah, some of the girls were looking like, you know, the sweet squashies? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had a couple of arms looking like that during the day, which. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be giving some reminders this week to some of them. Just I've got your sun cream on. But I think we're having a little bit of a drizzle. I can see the ground stuff just mooching her way over to the covers. Oh. As Yates comes in again, full of that worked into the leg side there. No run. And Esquire that comes around to pick it up. Oh, well, she can ill afford interruptions. Remember, on the final day, you don't even get the extra half hour mm. if it rains, so any play lost will be lost. Yates again, full of that defended. Bye, bedding in there. Trying to work out what the players have got. They've got like a scarf thing on. Yeah. Yeah, it's again, and that's cut away into the leg side, being chased but not stopped. But another four to add it to the over. I think just a little bit of rain is covering the city now. Yeah, it does look that way, isn't it? Yes, they've got and some big collars, haven't they? Almost as if. They're coming off. Uh, well, that's another blow for Warwickshire. Durham survived that little session of play. Um, we only had about just over 10 minutes, but they survived our early further loss, and this takes them another step closer to saving the game. It is, in fairness, the first interruption we've had the whole match, so we should be grateful from that point of view. But it is reducing the chances of Warwickshire winning this match. On come the uh, covers. It'll probably blow over pretty quickly how big the bank of cloud is. But there we are. Thank you, Chloe. Uh, rain has stopped play here at Edgbaston. Uh, with Durham, he says, look at the scoreboard, which says the words rain delay. So I'm now going to have to look at the score from somewhere else. 133 for three uh, in their second innings, trailing Warwickshire by 40 eight runs. Uh, there are matches uh, in progress at the moment. A few have been interrupted by rain, but there are, there are matches going on. Sorry, I've got a seventh Somerset wicket, so far be it for me to tell you which one to go to, but that one looks the most interesting at the moment. With Somerset 118 ahead with three wickets left. That is currently in progress, so you can follow that on the BBC website via the BBC Cricket page, but we will let you know uh, as and when we get back on here at uh, you will hear me do a report in about six eight minutes time but other than that we will leave you for the time being
This is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston, where Warwickshire are being held up in their bid to beat Durham, now by the weather as well. We had two overs after lunch. Durham reached 133 for three before they came off for a squally shower. The sun is back out again, so we'll probably be back on before too long. But with Durham just 48 runs behind Warwickshire's first innings total, uh, we seem to be running out of time from a Bears point of view. Durham 133 for three, rain stop play. This is Clive Eakin. In Edgbaston. Following the envelope inspection, play is due to restart at two fifteen. Six overs having been lost.
Miller at back up, umpires Richard Illingworth and Steve O'Shaughnessy. Welcome back to Edge Baston. Martin Emerson with you here and Chloe Brewer. Umpires are just heading back out to the middle. We had a bit of a heavy shower, only for a few minutes. Uh, I did say that passing showers were forecast this afternoon, but it's enough to have taken six overs out of the game, so Durham won't mind that at all. Uh, they are, though, chipping away at that uh, massive Warwickshire lead, and as they resume in a moment or two, Matthew Potts heading out to the middle on 71 and David Beddingham on 28. Durham 133 for three. So they're only 40, 60, so 62 runs behind. Uh, 40, 46 overs have gone. Sorry, yeah, 48 behind. I'm looking at my lunchtime score. Yeah, they're 48 behind. And uh, 60 overs did remain when they went off, but there are now 54 overs. So the first over is actually lost in this game. And uh, passing showers forecast this afternoon. It does look gloomy across to the northwest again. I think the, uh, I mean the cloud that hit us is miles away now, isn't it? <laughs> it is. And it came at about five to two, and it's. Probably way over Tamworth way by now. Yeah, we've got a little bit of blue skies above us for now, and we won't look to the left of us. <laughs> well, this will suit Durham down the ground if there's uh, a few more delays this afternoon. Sad news coming through from Kent today. Derek Underwood has passed away. I think at the uh, age of 78, I think it was. They've abandoned at Leicester, so uh, Leicestershire's game against Sussex ends in a draw. Colleague Adrian Harms took a photograph of the outfield there this morning and said there's an 11 o'clock inspection, but that's by the by because there's a lot of water on that field and there still is. Yeah. And they've abandoned at Northampton as well. North Hans against Middlesex ends in a draw. I don't think they've got on yet at Trent Bridge either today. So here's Bethel to bowl. Left arm round and uh, a nice shot from Potts. He's absolutely speared that through the outfield. Miles is chasing it up towards the scoreboard in the far corner. And they run three. Yeah, that's a lovely shot to restart after a little rain delay. It's a strange looking sky. There's some patches of very bright blue sky and then some pretty nasty clouds around as well. Yeah, it's a bit of licorice all sorts, isn't it? Mm. It's every sort of cloud you could probably think of with a little bit of blue. Bit of the old cumulus up there. <laughs> Bethel jogs in from the city end and that's cut into the ground there by Beddingham and off to the covers to Barnard. No run there. So left arm orthodox, born in Barbados, came over to rugby school on a scholarship. Signed for Warwickshire in 2017. Comes in and bowls, Beddingham plays out the short extra cover to Kai Smith, who's one of the 12th men being used by Warwickshire. He's on the strip from the last match, which is protected by Matting. So he's two across on the offside. It's a short extra cover. One slip in place as Beddingham drives and that's gone over Alex Davies at mid-off and it's running up towards the boundary rope at the far end, the old press box stand, but Davies has kept it in. I think it just lost its pace, so maybe a bit of that range just slowed the outfield. They run three and that's the 50 partnership from these two. And that has come in... 56 balls. Yeah. 
Well then again, there's a silly point in there now for Potts. He's just nudged that beyond the grasp of Smith. Rolls out short on the offside. One ball left of this over. Durham trail by 42 now. Potts drives that up to Davis at mid-off for one. And he will keep strike. He moves on to 75. Potts has batted ever so well. He has, hasn't he? He's, he's <laughs> looked the part. Yeah, definitely. Mm. A bit of grey sky over us at the moment, which gives the ground a bit of a gloomy look. But um, I'm not sure whether we'll see the, the floodlights on. Yeah, I'm There's not sure. There's certainly a bank of weather passing over us right now, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. And quite a way to the north. But it's not raining, that's the key thing. Yeah, hopefully it just stays dry. Yates begins 18th over of the day as he comes in for his first delivery. Outside of oh, a man shot. <laughs> driven ever so well through the covers, and that'll be four. That sounded beautiful off the bat. Well, that looked nice as well, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's a short boundary on that offside for Potts there, but he's hammered that mm. like a dart along the floor, and it's gone into the steps at the front of the west stand and ricocheted back onto the field off the, the concrete there. That was right out the middle. Mm, yeah, that was a glorious shot. So he only needs uh, three for his highest score. Oh, wow. And yeah, it comes again. That's defending off the back foot by Potts there. Yeah, I was just trying to look what his highest score was. 81 against North Hans in 2021. This is the fourth time he's got to a half century in a county championship match. Got one last year as well. Okay. In Yates comes, I feel like tried to work that to leg side, but mid wicket comes and picks it up that. They, um, I think when he got his 81 against Northampton, he might have come in as a night watchman on that occasion. Really? They came in last night at number four. Mm hmm. Richard Inningworth just borrowed a, the bat off David Beddingham to use the bat handle to thump the stumps in at this end. Replace the bales. And now the sun's out again. <laughs> yeah, we're really getting all sorts of efforts today, aren't we? What was it, sleep this morning? Yeah. Yates. And driven. It's found a field of Han and Dalby there at mid off. And back to Yates for a dot ball for that delivery and in Yates comes once again on a length and that's a wide into the leg side. They've scampered a single and it's a thrown off balance there. Um, but they've scampered safely and that adds a one to the total. bit more defensive this field. Mid on goes out towards the boundary and deep cover's been sent out. As Yates comes in. Final ball of the over and that's worked through the onside there and mid on comes around to pick it up and they've run and they've taken three from it. And that will bring the end of your over. So Durham are 148 for three. Quite a good partnership this, isn't it? It's what they needed, so... 59 runs they've added so far. So Beddingham kept strike as well there. Yeah, they're batting really well together, actually, and they're really ticking away at these runs that they need to chase down. 33 the deficit now. Yeah, they've definitely scored at quite a decent rate. Actually, if we carry on at this rate, we'll be in quite a good position.
Letting him wait as Bethel is about to begin a new over. This is his fourth, none for 11 so far. Smith is in short extra cover. Got one slip in place. Left arm round, he comes in. Beddingham taps this towards mid wicket, no run. It's picked up by Yates. I'd love to be a left handed cricketer. I feel like left handed batters just look so much better and why, nicer on a cover drive. Why? I'm not sure. There's something about it. Bethel in again. Driven into the ground and over. Short extra cover and out into the deep to miles on the Holly's boundary. Just the one run though, he was on that pretty quickly. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but just watching left handed batters. One of my housemates is a left handed batter. Who's so that? Amy Campbell. She scored a fair few the other day. Um, yeah. Bethel. Bowls to Potts. Potts drives it back past the bowler and all the way down the far end of the ground. And he's got a career best 82. Well done, him. That brings up the 150 for Durham as well. <coughs> Halfway through this over. Bethel bowls. Potts leaves it. He watches it go into the keeper's gloves. So 62 runs the partnership. The deficit is 30. Potts has 82. Beddingham 35. Switching the field around here. Bringing man in from mid-wicket. The man on the mid-wicket boundary coming into mid-wicket. Now got three on the drive, short on the offside here for Potts. Bethel bowls, Potts forward, just plays the ball down into the ground safely. Last ball of the 49th over, there'll be 51 overs to go in theory after this. Of course, two are lost in the change around of an innings. That's a drive by. She didn't quite time that well though, just bobbles out on the offside. End of the over. So Durham 151 for three. You're listening to commentary from BBC Sport, BBC Coventry and Warwickshire, WM and BBC Radio Newcastle. Yeah, I'm sure Pops will be pretty chuffed with his new highest score slash whatever he ends up on. Um, but he's played ever so well, he's played some really nice shots. And his partnership with Bellingham is looking pretty strong at the moment. Warwickshire sure will have to do something pretty special to break this partnership. And Yates is in for his 19th over. <laughs> I think the umpire's just popping the bales back on. This does it's got quite gusty out there. As Yates comes in for the first ball of the over, and that's full. Oh, it's just inside edge, but I think oh, his shin or something is ricocheted off back towards the stumps. As Yates is coming back for the second ball. Mm. <laughs> He's pulled out of that one. He's just returning to his mark for another go at the second ball of the over. And he's coming in outside of that's cut off the back foot by Bedding and Van. That's deep cover who collects it, sending it back around towards Yates there. And mid ons are just come up from the boundary for Potts here. And he 
know, it's sort of like been defended there by Hart straight into the ground. That's a dot ball. Domino alarm any Warwickshire <laughs> supporters, but I think the next wave of weather is going to land right on top of us. <laughs> it's just drifting in now. It looks very dark over. Yeah, it's full, and that's driven west. to Helen Dalby there. Yeah, it's not like a promising in that corner, is it? At all. I think that'll hit us, Filippo, or miss us. Hey, what? <laughs> it's coming straight for us, that. Yeah, he's in for the lamp defender there by Potts. Phil has the local knowledge. He reckons it's going to drift behind us. <laughs> it is interesting how much weather does miss this ground with it being down in this dip. Mm. It happens quite often at Durham as well. Actually, you can see it skirting around to the north. Last ball for over has been pulled away and that will find a boundary. Nice shot from Potts there. Just yeah, that's a great shot. It's just latched onto a short ball. Yeah, swiveled on it and lobbed it over the top of Miles at backward square leg and away mm. to the boundary for four. Yeah, we used to save us at my old cricket club because um, there was like a river behind the club. Where's this like at? A, oh, it's down south. It's, it was called Shepton. Shepperton Studios. <laughs> yeah. yeah, isn't it? Yep. Is it on the, uh, Shepperton Studios, are they on the Thames or not? Uh, no, they're not no. quite on the Thames. They're actually building a whole new Netflix studios there, which is it's right. taken ages to put up, but it's huge. Yeah, it's nearly it's up. It's going to be a rival to Sunderland. <laughs> yeah. Europe's biggest um, film studios have just been given planning permission on the banks of the River Weir in Sunderland. And oh, really? It's going to be built an all former shipyard and Oh. Crane production land. Okay. And uh, they reckon if it all comes off the way they're planning, there'll be eight and a half thousand people working there. Oh my word. So, yeah. That's a lot of people. Bethel bowls here. This is uh, played away by Beddingham towards mid wicket. So house prices might fly on the Roca Riviera. <laughs> might be able to sell my house to some film star. <laughs> Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> In comes Bethel. That's whacked out towards mid wicket, and that is the end of Beddingham. He's not picked that up well there at all, and there was one fielder out there, and he's picked him out perfectly. And uh, unfortunately, I think if it had been a yard or two either direction, it was away, it would have been a six. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to see who took the catch because he was virtually on the rope as he. Steadied himself to take that catch there. Danny Briggs. Bethel's first wicket in first class cricket. Beddingham, the man to go. Briggs, the catcher. Keeps everybody interested. Yeah, that's definitely what. Work you need it, but just need to keep chipping away at the batting order. Durham four wickets down and still behind. They trail by 25. Ollie Robinson is the new man. Tell you what, in three or four minutes' time, Beddingham could have been saved by the rain there because mm. it's looking very bleak now. The sky's filled right in. The partnership ends at 67 from 78 balls. 156 the score. Still plenty of runs to be had in this uh, wicket. With this ball. 50.2 overs gone. 49.4 left in the day. Providing A, there's no more rain. And B, there isn't a change of innings. Durham just got to keep batting and batting throughout the afternoon. Just... Eat the overs up, occupy time. So Robinson, the new man. Yeah, that's definitely what Durham needs to do here. Just need to try and keep a risk down. Four balls left of the over, so. Two short extra covers in here, a slip. 
keeper up to the stumps. Backward point, short mid wicket, deep mid wicket. Baffle left arm round. Robinson forward plays the ball back to him. Along the track. Bowling from the city end, left arm round. In past the umpire. Oh, and Robinson's gone for a little sweep shot there. I'm not sure if that's hit anything or not. Is it going to be by? It's four leg buys. I think he's looking at the umpire and saying that came off my bat there. <laughs> <laughs> I can guarantee if the keeper got onto that, he would not be saying that he hit that. Um, but he'll probably just be looking to get off off the mark here. I reckon we could be lucky here. You can see all the rain at the kind of top end of the city. Hmm. Bethel in again. Robinson plays that late off towards point to Mosley. It might actually just go round the top of the ground rather mm -hmm. than round the back of the ground. You meant over the back, over the top, over the front? You meant over the back, over the front, is that what you meant? <laughs> yeah. Might just get away with this one. Mm. And the sky is really filled in right across the city because the red lights on the cranes are so obvious now against yeah, the steely has. backdrop. Last ball of this 51st over, Durham 160 for four. And uh, Robinson plays that out towards deep point for one and will keep the strike. Durham 156 for four when the wicket fell, trailing by 25 at the time. So they've added another five since then, so it's down to 20. Yeah, they're really doing well at actually taking on through these runs. Um, just a loss of two wickets today, which given Warwickshire a little bit here with 49 overs left in day and 6 wickets remaining. Yates is in for his 20th over of this. So, in he comes for the first ball of the over. That's Justin Lamp defended by Robinson there. He's on one run as a new batter. Yates in. We'll hit a pad. Half a shout there. Umpire uninterested. Yeah, outside the line of off stump. Yeah. Outside the line of off stump. Do you want to come on at the end of this over, Filippo? Yourself warmed up. <laughs> yeah, it's full outside off, and that's driven out towards cover. Comes around and picks up over. <laughs> Taken a single from it. That is strange. That cloud was definitely heading for us and now <laughs> seems to have shoved off to the north again. Yeah, yeah it's full of lamp defended there. It does look fractionally brighter to the. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It just seems to be going round us. Yeah. As Yates comes in, short of level played into the leg side there by Potts. No run from it though. And this will be the final delivery of this over for Yates, completing his 20th over so far. And it will be just short of length and hit the shin of a short leg there. And that's the end of the over. That will be me. Get Chloe back in a little bit later on when uh, Clive returns. Chloe Brewer, Martin Emerson, Clive Eakin and Phil Britt, your commentary team on this final day in Edge Paston. Mm. 
And look at the rain coming down over there towards Birmingham City's ground. Looks like it's absolutely chucking it down over there. It's been raining there all through the winter. It's been raining everywhere all winter. Speffel then to start his sixth over. This is defended by Lee Robinson. Took his first wicket this afternoon. Got Beddingham. Lakeside boundary caught by Briggs. Doesn't look promising, does it? This uh, no. at the moment. But ground staff right up by the hopper cover yeah. as well. Faster delivery. That was almost a Yorker length ball. That one. <coughs> Robinson forward to deal with it. What do you reckon then, Phil? I think we'll be it's off in. in a few minutes' time. Mm. Starting to rain again. Bethel in. Robinson meets that on the bounce, plays it back to the bowler. Been lucky though in this match that uh, it got through until the afternoon session without losing any time. That's a medium pace delivery, that <laughs> one. It's gone off to point, no run. The uh, groundsman's been in endless dialogue with quite a few people on Twitter over the last couple of days. Yes, he has, hasn't uh, he? George yep. de Bell's pointed out that. Uh, They've had more or less un uninterrupted play here. Credit to the ground staff. And it's been so soft and wet. Robinson cuts at that one. And it's gone off towards deep backward point, Miles Fields. We might just get away with it, you know, Martin. It's, I think it's it rained very briefly a moment ago, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, uh, full credit to the umpires this season as well they've been very proud of getting games on people, the players back on the field we saw that during the first match against Worcestershire last ball of the over Potts drives up to Davis at long off for one and will keep strike he moves on to 87 he'll have one eye on the weather because he's understanding moving quite rapidly up towards what would be a maiden first last century for him so he won't want to see interruptions and a break in his concentration although in fairness to him he came back out again after the first rain interruption and uh, carried on as he had in the whole of the morning session uh, doing an outstanding job as a night watchman Yates will continue into his 21st over um, in bowls and this is turned to short leg and uh, well stopped at short leg by Bethel. 164 for four in their second innings as Yates is in and forward comes Potts and runs it down into the offside. Has his batting been like as good as this in Last season and the season before. He's uh, steady, yeah. Yeah. I think he likes the uh, responsibility as well. That's good. Excellent. Well, he's certainly doing a job here as he plays this one back down in front of him. And there's no run. In comes Yates, gives that plenty of air, and that one just gets the inside edge and runs away down to blind leg. But uh, uh, just down to short leg rather, and there's no no run. Here he is again in and bowls and Potts goes back oh. and oh. turns it straight to short leg, but it was turned r quickly to short leg. It's one of those where you, if you're going to catch it, you'll it'll got to hit the hands and stick. But uh, hit him on the wrist or the knee, wherever. But. Uh, he survives it, 165 for four. Last ball of the over, and Robinson is forward to that with the knee bent out into the offside, and end of another over, 165 for four. David Lloyd, Bumble, 
says the temperature gauge is hovering around 11, a balmy 11 degrees in York today. I was looking, um, 147 runs he got last season in 11 innings with one not out. Highest score last season, 64. I think that was against Derbyshire in Derby. So 147, 88, and he got 44 in the first. He's got 132 in this match alone. <laughs> Facing Bethel, and he plays that ball back to Bethel. Mm. I don't want to sound like a parrot, but the next big bank of weather's not <laughs> coming in. <laughs> so, well, who knows? That one might skirt around us as well. Just one brief rain interruption today. This is played safely away back with the bowler. Six overs were lost just after lunch. So 45.4 remaining. Durham 165 for four. It is raining. What would you do if you were out there now on 88? Would you give it a bit of a welly? I don't think he needs to. Are you fearing that? I don't think the weather forecast that bad for to the point where you'll not see any more play. I think it's passing showers. Yeah, I think if I was out there, I'd go and put the next two over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Battle balls. Ooh. <laughs> He's played that. In an angle, upwards off the back foot, just beyond the grasp of uh, silly mid-off, Kai Smith. I think one or two of the players thought they were going to be going off there, you know, because yeah. they all sort of made a move towards the dressing room. It is raining. Maybe at the end of the over, there's two balls left. Bethel to Robinson. Robinson, big stride forward to snuff that one out. They're keeping them out there, that's yeah. good. We're in the, there's a hole in the cloud, and it's the yeah. centre of the storm. You can see, the, see how the cloud's bending away. Yeah. Incredible. Played safely into the ground and down towards backward point by Robinson. It looks like we are yeah. looking straight through the eye of the storm. Huge cir circle of cloud. Richard Dillingworth is quite happy to stay out there, but he's got so much wrapping on. He's got a muffler. Around his, you know, all you can see is just his nose and his eyes. So, 166 for four. As Yates starts a new over from the pavilion end. He's in to Boulder Potts, who is caught behind, I think. No, mm -hmm. it's come off nothing. It went through off um, Burgess's gloves and was taken and slipped by Rhodes, but umpire Edingworth is not convinced, and Potts survives. That one popped a little bit on Potts. In comes Yates, and this is driven down to Barnard, who hasn't bowled, which just makes you wonder whether there's a little problem there, because I would have thought he would have... He had some sort of bowl. He's hardly bowled in this game. This next one has Yates in and bowls. And this is turned round down to long leg for a single between short leg and leg slip. Potts moves on to 90. 167 for four. Gradually working this uh, deficit down. Yates gives that plenty of air, and Robinson drives and drives well. It uh, evades the dive of Hannon Dolby at well, wide, that was, sort of wide mid-off and that down was a to the ropes. Peculiar moment, wasn't it? it? It seemed to take about an age to go down towards the ball there, in about four different moves. He is, he's a, got a long way to go, yeah. though, hasn't he? He's six he's foot got eight. Got his hand on it, and then yeah. just deflected it over the rope. You, you wouldn't, at that height, be throwing yourself around, I suppose, like a, a goalkeeper. And it is incredibly cold out there. Mm. Yates in again, bowls, and forward comes Robinson with an open faced bat and runs it away behind point. It's backward point for a single, a comfortable single. So 172, and Durham are nearly at parity. They? Yeah, they're what, uh, nine behind. 
siren goes off somewhere over the back of the ground. It's in Yates bowls. This one is chopped down onto his foot by Potts and runs back towards the stumps. And there's no run. So another over ticks by. We have got 44 remaining in the day. Well, it's possible we might get more, a few, one or two more than that if we stay on. Uh, the umpires are now coming over to have a chat with each other. Might need the lights on here. Yeah. Are oh, they looking at the ball by the looks of it? We changed a ball yesterday during the Durham innings yesterday. But it was about 70 overs mm. old or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Um. Oh, they're continuing with it. Mel was saying, Melinda was saying on um, Saturday uh, that obviously she, with Australian cricket, they've got much more u um, knowledge about the kookaburra. And uh, she said it does, when it gets wet, it's not really one which likes to get, because it, whatever it's made of, it, uh, it tends to expand a bit. We've got the light meter checking out now. Well, it's a uh, kangaroo leather. Kangaroo leather. <laughs> oh, hop it, go on. <laughs> Bethel starts a new over, bowling to Robinson. Did suggest that last year because they had the Cookaburra ball at uh, Leicester last year in the June. And uh, started a whole debate as to whether you could get goods made out of kangaroo leather, like sporting goods. And I think they did make footballs out of kangaroo leather. Rain's coming in now, heavier. Yeah. They'll be going off it any does look It does look a set in to our left. Yeah. Yeah, and I yeah. think they're calling the covers on there now. There you go. Sense before the rain really starts and gets onto the wicket. So, stumps coming down. You can hear the hover cover being started up. 172 for four. Pots 90 not out. Uh, Robinson just came in at the fall of the last wicket. He's on eight, and at the moment, Durham Trail still by nine runs, that's all, with six wickets in hand. In theory, we've got uh, 44 overs, less one ball remaining in the day, but we're obviously going to lose some time now, because this rain, which now over the city, is absolutely tipping it down. You can see against the buildings that the rain's come in. They've abandoned as a draw at Nottingham. Right. And this is going to be, I think, quite a lengthy rain spell, unless the wind keeps blowing it through. That's one good thing, that if the, the wind is still howling across the ground, so it might just blow these clouds through quick, quickly, but it uh, doesn't look very promising at all at the moment. But the ground staff not in sort of mad rush to get uh, the covers out. It's not raining that hard at the moment. I think, still think most of it, uh, Martin, is going towards the city, and we're catching the sort of outside edge of it. A sad news today about Derek Underwood, wasn't it? Yeah. Terrific cricketer. Well, was he 78? Did 78, 78 he was, yes. Um, he played for England during the 60s and 70s, and... Uh, a wonderful cricketer, a spin bowler, and on certain wickets, virtually unplayable. A terrific servant for England. And, uh, he was uh, very sad news coming through, so uh, thoughts with his family. So what's the score? 172 for four. Yeah. So we'll take a, a little yeah. break. Um, there's not going to be anything for the, the covers of the hover cover are being rolled out across the uh, the square. So it's going to take a little time to uh, keep, get that tidied up and cleared. As soon as any chance to play, we'll be back on. Um, so tune in just in case. Thank you.
This is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston, where Warwickshire's progress towards victory, slow progress, as we said, has been hampered by a second interruption for rain in the day. Dunham 172 for four, though, only trail Warwickshire now by nine runs on Warwickshire's first innings total. Warwickshire still needing six wickets to win, and then they'll need some runs as well. They have taken one more wicket in the last section of play, an important one for Jacob Bethel. It was his maiden first-class wicket, David Benningham holding out into the deep, and Danny Briggs taking the catch, Benham gone for 36. Matthew Botts is still there on 90. Dunham close to saving the game. They're 172 for four. This is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston.
taken to more than other matches in the place around the country. And Dulles started the first all out of the utility ball in Southampton, where Hampshire are playing Lancashire. Hampshire in their first innings were dismissed for 367, and then Lancashire were then dismissed for 484. Hampshire in their second innings are currently 111 for three. Hampshire trail by six shots with seven wickets in hand. Now count Crown Charlton, the match between Essex and Kent. Essex declared their first innings closed at 530 for 7 and then dismissed Kent for 413. Essex declared their second innings closed at 257 for 4 and in reply Kent are currently 48 for 4. Kent require a further 327 runs. See it in the stadium Bristol, the match between Gloucestershire and Yorkshire. Yorkshire were dismissed in their first innings for 326. Gloucestershire then made 263. Yorkshire declared their second innings closed at 434 for 6. The Gloucestershire are currently 254 for 4. Gloucestershire require a further 244 runs. By Gardens Cardiff, the match between Glamorgan and Derbyshire. Glamorgan were dismissed in their first innings for 237. They dismissed Derbyshire for 198. In their second innings, Glamorgan declared it closed at 361 for 7. And Derbyshire, in reply, are currently 158 for 3. Derbyshire require a further 243 runs. At the Kia Oval, the match between Summers and Somerset. Somerset were dismissed for 285. Surrey then were dismissed for 428. Somerset in their second innings are currently 313 for 7, a lead of 170. The matches between Leicestershire and Sussex and Northamptonshire and Middlesex have both been abandoned as a draw.
Richard Edinburgh and Steve A. Shaw. Well, welcome back. We're about to resume in this championship match between Warwickshire and Durham after another rain delay. They actually took an early tee to minimise the number of overs lost. So only six overs, we reckon, be lost. There are 37 overs left, plus the five balls that still had to be bowled in the over that wasn't completed. But even so... Well, it's not completely gone for Warwickshire. The wicket of David Bellingham will keep them interested, but Dunham nine runs ahead. Um, I don't know if they managed to score, say, four and over. For 20 overs, what would that put them? Well, they only put them 89 ahead with about 15 to go, so probably need either to score at a slightly quicker rate or bat a little longer than that, but with six wickets left, they should manage that, you would think. Chloe rejoins me. Chloe over there. And Robinson on eight and Potts on ninety. Yeah, hopefully we get through this now without much interruption. It looks pretty good. Actually now to the left of us. Anything's been blown across. Well, Jacob Bethel, who's got his maiden first-class wicket in this innings, is to resume. Well, I should really do need wickets pretty briskly now. But you never know, they'll stick at it. Don't get anything for giving up. <laughs> There's a slip and a Short cover as Bethel comes in round the wicket, and that's clipped away into the offside for a single by Robinson, who moves on to 9. 173 for 4. So it'll be a landmark for Durham when they get 8 more runs and wipe out the first innings deficit. Watch, well, have you made 269 for 8? Sorry, 269 for 3 declared in their first innings, which the Association of Cricket Statisticians reckon may be the ninth highest score for 3 wickets down. In a first class match, that's played into the offside for no run. And Durham all out for 517, which the statisticians reckon may be the third highest score that the teams have to follow on with. Bethel into bowl. That's a four defensive, there's no run. I probably should have you scored that many, you shouldn't really have to follow on, but I remember the reverse <laughs> of that when I covered Yorkshire for a couple of years and David Bias was captain and there was a match, it was actually at Swansea against Glamorgan mm. as uh, Bethel comes in to bowl and they play the mid-wicket, there's no run I think Yorkshire made something like 280 or something and then Glamorgan were bowled out for not very many mm -hmm. and he didn't enforce the follow-on even though there was forecast of rain around okay. anyway, he won the match yeah. And afterwards we said in the interview, well, why didn't you enforce the fire? I don't think we battered well enough to justify it. <laughs> in comes Bethel to bowl. He did also say his farmer's instinct told him when the rain was coming. <laughs> That's brilliant. 173 for four here, Durham. Looking to complete a draw here. Yeah, I feel like people who are around the weather, so groundsmen or... Farmers just have a sick sense yeah. for when it is. I remember being at, at one of the cricket clubs at home, and one of my friends was covering the ground for that day. And the actual groundskeeper messaged him saying, "In 20 minutes, you're going to get some rain. Just <laughs> make sure you cover up the pitches." <laughs> yeah. And 
Yeah, in 20 minutes there was a downpour, so we got it spot on. No need for all these fancy weather radars <laughs> that people go for these days. I've always mm. avoided those. Mm. Yeah, you can never really tell. No. I did see a thing though the other day where it was. I can't remember. I don't know how true it is, but apparently some people can smell when the rain is coming. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Sounds like a bit like cow standing up or sitting down, but anyway. <laughs> Dan Moses coming into the attack now. He bowled 1.5 overs in the first innings, and he's bowled one over so far in this. So, if he comes for a second, that's a full of that, and defended back to him to start his second over. As he's just heading towards the back of his marks. He's got two men on the offside, actually. Three men, including Slip. Got extra cover. As defended, big shout there. Maybe pad them back. Umpire uninterested. Yeah, very s wide mid off. Short legs just coming across into a short extra cover. Very, he's basically on the strip there. It's ever so close. As Moisey comes in again, full of length, defended there. But the outside edge towards a backward point would be slips have gone and picked it up and chucked it back in and they've scampered a single from it as the sun is now shining on Edge Baston and that's what I like to see so, Mosey's just at the top of his mark again on a length and that's worked into the leg side and they'll take another single from it Giving it oh, a little bit of a shine, a little bit of a clean. Must be a little bit of dampness out in the outfield. After that little downpour there. So it comes in again, full of length and defended back to him there. And there's one ball remaining in the over. And the short action just jumped back across the short leg there. Final ball on the length defended by Robinson there and that brings the end of the over 175 for 4 are Durham Robinson on 10 and Potts is on 91 what? well Phil's gone now I think I'm right in saying that Dan Moses' wicket in this match was his first championship wicket mm -hmm. he got a 3 for in a first class match but I'm sure I heard somebody say it wasn't a championship match it was a different first class game but can absolutely swear to that. That's my understanding. Jacob Beth on this game's got his maiden first class wicket. And he's bowling now from the Birmingham end with Warwickshire needing wickets. Ten minutes ago, really. He comes in to bowl around the wicket to Potts, who drives that back to the bowler. No run. Potts, of course, will have an eye on a maiden first class century. Already on a career high of 91. Yeah, he's batted incredibly well, actually. He has. And he plays back to that into the ground. To a short cover for no run. And Bethel again. Round the wicket, he comes, bowls. And he's just stretching for that a little bit to... Potts might have skidded on a little bit from uh, Bethel and he gets it away safely no rum and in comes Bethel quicker ball, play it back to him no rum elsewhere Essex will still have ambitions for a win that will uh, shake up the first vision a bit because they would have two wins then and it might be the only two wins in the division they have Kent at 71 for 5 now at Chelmsford need 5 more wickets for victory Bethel bowls and that's pushed back down the pitch it's no run they're at T at Southampton where Lancashire needs 6 more wickets but like here they're running out of time because Hampshire are only 2 runs behind their first innings total now it's 119 for 4 Nottinghamshire also should declare this a draw earlier Sorry, I've still been held up by Somerset at the Oval. 
That one's getting a bit of air, and it's played past the bowler, and Alex Davis has to scamper across from mid-off to mid-on to field. It's one more run. Somerset 3.20 for 7. They're 177 ahead of Somerset now. How many overs have we got left in that one? Um, well, they've still got 34 overs left, so there's still time for uh, Surrey, but Somerset are resisting. T at Cardiff, where Derbyshire are resisting. Say they're resisting. I don't think they're going to win. They're 185 for three. And need another 216 in the final session to win. That'd be some effort. Some but, uh, yeah, look as if they're going for the draw. And Gloucestershire, likewise against Yorkshire, they're 293 for four. They need 205 in the final session to win. Earlier, the matches at uh, Leicester and Northampton were declared draws. Uh, we have. Are we changing the ball here? Maybe. Yeah, it must be. Oh, is that... Yeah, must be looking at it. Sean sees walking off for the ball. I've got that nice little silver case of cricket balls. <laughs> Said the first time, watch for I'm so sorry, we've run out of the kookaburra ones. Use this one instead. And that's. Well, the one on the field is the same to Steve as you only because having a little bit of a joke together. Out comes the case of balls. So how come they're using the Duke's balls from Friday? Well, it was just a, 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 I don't know what experiments the right word, but they just decided they were going to use the the um, Kookaburra balls. They did it for two matches last season. Mm -hmm. They've decided this season to do it for four matches, so two matches at the start of the season, and then it will reappear in September. Okay. Hmm. So, yes, it's all a bit messing around with the county championship, however... <laughs> <laughs> it is the way. Mm. I remember as a Stephen Chalk, it's a very good history that Cathy Championship when he was talking about that. Well, I think it's actually in the book where he says it's a bit ironic that people call the Championship follows Conservative with a small C because the reality is the Championship accepted far more changes and <laughs> um, messing around than just about any other form of cricket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gonna play any rare ball cricket this year? Do you know? I thought I have a moment as um, not any form no. for it. So no. hopefully in the next few years we get some multi-day stuff in. But um, so we had a two-day game scheduled last week, but it just got rained off. No. <laughs> <laughs> see, and full of length, and that's driven into covers. Will it be cut off? No. That has four runs out of pots total. He moved ninety-six. Um. Yeah, so hopefully they get something in the next few nice. years. I guess part of the problem is most countries in the world don't really play it, do they? There's probably about yeah. three countries, India, Australia and England, that play yeah, it. Yeah, that's a, that's a thing, isn't it? Mostly in on leg, this time that's worked into the leg side, but no run from it. They were thinking about it. As it He's just heading up to the top of his mark. Yeah, and then he comes short of length, that's what worked into the left side. And straight to midwicket, he comes and picks it up and sends it back to him. He's at the fall of the overs. Get through his overs pretty quick, is Mosey. And that's on the lamp defended there by Potts. Yeah, that is a point that when we say there's a minimum of 34 overs to go, I imagine actually if they really want to, they could get more than that in. Mm. On a length and walked into the leg side of Bell. Pick one from it as the square leg comes in to field it. I, mean, I haven't got any more wickets by sort of 20 past 5. They probably won't bother or shake mm. hands and go home, but if, if they do start putting a bit of pressure on them, they might be able to get some more overs in. Full of lap, and that's driven into your side for one. And Durham are now leading by one, I believe. Yes. So we await the Durham declaration. They're one ahead. <laughs> uh, actually, that's the point. We can't finish at 20 past five, can we? Not unless Durham trust Warwickshire implicitly, because if, <laughs> if they declare at 5:20 for a draw, then Warwickshire. I tell you what, we'll we'll chase the runs after all. Then. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> so we might be half five. Is it half five, half an hour? These are like, or is it an hour? I can't remember. We'll find out. <laughs> Players will walk off when they're ready. <laughs> One eighty-two four four is the Durham total. They've done well today. They lost just two wickets. They've been helped a little bit by a couple of spells of rain, but in truth, it's been a good rear guard action with the bat from them. And Bethel. Comes into bowl to uh, Robinson. He sweeps for four. The back of square leg hits the concrete wall. I guess. In fact, it's a six. And all the way. Sweep shot from Molly Robinson. Hardly a ripple. Not too many in the ground, that must be said. Mm. Not a great deal of jeopardy in the game. Quite a lot of people left it to yesterday and might have regretted it. Mm. Um, because it was a good final session, but... I think the punters have left now fairly confident they're not going to regret it. You never know. Some of them, of course, are staying inside somewhere to keep warm. That's a uh, play back to the bowler. There's no run. Yeah, I definitely don't blame him for staying inside. No. I was having my lunch in the members' area. Somebody kept opening the door and didn't really say, can you just stay outside and keep the door shut? It's freezing. <laughs> That's pushed out to the offside. There's no run. Yeah, but there's not a single person outside without a coat on. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure a couple of bubble hats will be in and around the crowd as well. So, uh, push that to the offside for a single from Robson. Hopefully there's a few Durham supporters still around ready to celebrate Matthew Potts' maiden first class entry if he gets it. He's on 97 and he's on strike. Two balls left this over. Chance then for Matthew Potts. Big moment for him might not be a... Oh, Morris should be ruthless. They're putting players around him. <laughs> players for the miscue drive. Not going to give him this century. Bethel round the wicket and he's guided that pass. Backward point. That might go all the way for four. And even if it doesn't, I think they will have time to run three. It is going to be pulled in, but they do run three. And Matthew Potts has his maiden first class century. Very well batted. Came in as a night watcher yesterday. Did his job then and has gone on to prosper. 173 balls for his century. Uh, Matthew Potts. And, of course, it won't do his England credentials any harm if he can show he can bat as well as bowl. 11 fours and a six in that innings. 1-9-2 for four. All right, Durham supporters, you can go home now if you want. <laughs> Bethel. It's about the last ball of the over. And that's uh, guided out to point. Slight misfield from Mosey, but it doesn't cost anything. They don't go for a run. It remains 192 for four. They lead by 11, Durham. Minimum 33 overs left of the day. More relevantly, we've got two and a quarter hours scheduled in the day. Lots of spin being bowled. Yeah, I should imagine we'll get through these 33 overs quite quickly and potentially add on, on yeah. the towards the end of the day. Darren will hope that becomes immaterial and they're well safe mm. by then, but we shall see. Yorkshire have taken a fifth Gloucestershire wicket before tea, so they still have ambitions of a win. Mosley um, sneak down the leg side there, stop ball. So they've got leg slip and short square in. Two people under the legs around the bat and as he comes in again, and that's on a left defended there by Potts at the set cheering for the Durham innings. He's fighting incredibly well for his maiden first class 100. As he's in again, on a left defended by Potts there. And I mean, he's well surpassed his previous best score as well. Yes, 81. Previous best, so. Big moment for him. As he's slightly flighted this time, it's driven through the covers and deep cover picks it up to chuck it back in. That just rotates the strike. Pots moves to 101. Not a match winning innings, but in 
to some extent, a match saving innings. Marzi again into the offside. And just rotated a strike. As cover picked it up. And it's sent back to Marzi here for his final two balls of the over. <coughs> Just on length, that's well stopped there by mid wicket. And that brings it end of the over. So, Durham 194 for 4, Robinson 19, and Potts is on 101. Clouds coming over again, <laughs> the grey clouds, kind of breeze blowing. We lost 12 overs in the day, so you can't say that. Uh, I mean, obviously, Durham have been helped a little bit by that, but it's not the weather that's made them. Look like they're going to save the game. It's their own no, absolutely. Solid batting. <laughs> Especially, we're quite lucky to get on, considering what's going yeah. on around the country. Absolutely. So Jacob Bethel is going to continue. He's chatting to Alex Davis. Yeah, well, I should imagine I'll be thinking, how are they going to get these remaining six wickets through here? Got a, a slip, a short cover, a, a mid off, a mid on, both close in and the closest mid wicket. A solid defence by Ollie Robinson. No run. Teed out the oval, and Somerset have got to tee safely. 320 for 7. They lead Surrey by 177. Round the wicket comes Bethel, gives that plenty of air. In fact, I think it's a, a low full toss in the end, and Robinson has dispatched it through long on 4 4. We have got to the stage where boundaries aren't being applauded anymore because people are too cold. There are not many of them here anyway. <laughs> However, it was a decent shot. 198 for four. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure people are willing to keep their hands firmly in the pockets if they're outside watching. Uh, as I say, I dare say there are some people sitting inside, but there's probably, what, 20 in the outside seats, apart from any of them might be in the members' area. Hmm. Pethel round the wicket bowls. That's a four defensive. There's no run. So Warwickshire pack their bags after this and we'll head for Southampton next week. Will they have Chris Rushworth back? And we weren't expecting Liam Norwell back, but just noting him doing those running exercises earlier. So I'll have to ask Mark Robinson about that if we're interviewing him at the end of the day. That is a bit short. It's a dispatched away by Robinson up to the offside. And then uh, Durham come back here to, well, not here, but to. This sort of area to go to <laughs> Kidderminster. Have you ever been to Kidderminster cricket ground? I haven't. We are um, mm. heading there on Friday as well. I'm covering oh, yeah, okay. that game. But um, we've got one of our games there in a few weeks, actually. Oh, OK. Yes, because you normally play a few at New Road, don't you? Mm. But that's uh, not looking very promising <laughs> this year. Let's play the mid on. There's no rum. Uh, have you been to Kidderminster? I have, a long time ago. But, yeah, yeah. Worcestershire used to play a match there. I used to cover Worcestershire many moons ago. Yeah. And they used to play a regular match okay. there every season. I had to cover a few of those. Um, Bethel comes into bowl. And that's all oh, that's gone through the covers. And it's missed by the cover fielder, so they will get two runs. There's the apocryphal tale there, which I'm sure is said at a number of the grounds. And it's almost certainly not true. But they say that the, the six there uh, travel further than any other six... <laughs> ever hit in cricket because there's a railway line along the back of it and somebody hit a six into a freight train oh. off it went to the other end of the country but, uh, <laughs> that's probably made up and it's probably said in other grounds as well 201 for four so the 200 up for uh, Glamorgan 63 overs bold and um, well Rob Yates is coming back into the attack I say we're going through the motions exactly but you do feel as not too much jeopardy in this at the moment. Two quick wickets might change that, but it all looks pretty under control for Glamorgan, who lead by 20. For Durham, even. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't make me think of Glamorgan. I haven't played them for a long time. Not in the Red Bull cricket, anyway. Yates, to return. Lake side is packed. As he comes into the attack, full outside off. And that's driven through the covers for four. 
And that's a very handsome shot from Robinson Vare. But the last time I played Glamorgan in the Championship, it might have been at Colwyn Bay. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Mm -hmm. To Colwyn Bay. Ian Bell scored loads of runs in that match. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> Yates in for his second ball of the over. And that's patted back to him there. Much better line at bowling. Stump line there. Not giving any room for Robbins to get his hands through. As he's coming in for the third ball of the over. And that's been cut off fourth stump there out towards where point would be, but covers come around to pick it up, and that's just taken a single from it. So Essex have got a whole session to try and get five more wickets. Kent to 79 for five. It's only 296 to win. That's obviously irrelevant. But if the weather holds there, you think Essex have got a chance. They could be well clear at the top of the table. Yeah, it's in Bev. Got on the pad, but definitely going down there. Half a shout from a couple of the fielders there. And Yates. Yeah, once again, short of length, and that's worked into the leg side. Squire comes round to pick it up. He sends it back in, and they've taken a single from it. Just as a copy of the excellent Cricketer magazine next door, mm -hmm. and they predict where everyone's going to finish in the county championship. They put Warwickshire seventh in the first seventh. division. Oh, not too generous. That's seventh. That's put, harsh. Put Durham fifth. Yates flighted this time and that's driven and that is four and that brings the end of the over. Durham are 211 for four. That is a bit harsh actually, A little, little bit, I'll see. Um, no argument with who they put top, inevitably, sorry. <laughs> and I think they put Lancashire second and Essex third. Okay. There we go. Anyway, 211 for four here. Danny Briggs is to come back into the attack. These two have ensured that uh, there wasn't a quick flurry of wickets after David Bennett can rather hold out. I've given away the wickets once or twice in this game, Durham. But a sound of 51 now, and these two have been together for 14 overs. Yeah, they've done well to establish a, another partnership, which is seeming quite hard to break for Warwickshire here. Yeah. Danny Briggs will try. Well, it's sure that stage of probably needing a hat trick. Two slips in place. Looks like there's going to be a, a leg gully that uh, Dan Mosley's trotting to, or is it going to be a, a leg slip? He's a bit deep for a slip. He's gone part of the way back down to fine legs. on the mid-wicket boundary, which is where Benningham did hole out. Mm. Briggs, no wickets in the second, he's just one of the match. He might be a little frustrated with that. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And in fact, he's now called Dan Mosley away from that position on the leg side. He's going to put him at mid-on. Where's he putting Ollie Hannon and Dorby? Is that just a straight swap? Yeah, I think it is. If it was. is, I don't quite understand why. It is. Um, he's brought uh, mid wicket in. So, Briggs comes into bowl. That's played. To mid off. There's no run. <laughs> Head barner stops with his foot and then <laughs> celebrates as if he's just scored Aston Villa's second goal at Arsenal, <laughs> which he apparently celebrated heartily yesterday. This next one skids on a bit. It's played back to the bowler for no run. And it's 2 11 for 4. Don't just ticking the ball, the deliveries away and ticking the time away. As that one is. Bit of a leading edge, but it's all on the ground with the offside for a single. It is about time now, not about overs, because they're well ahead of the over eight. But, my goodness, Craig Miles is now 
It looks like the Masked Singer. He's got a <laughs> snoo right across his face. I mean, you know it's him because he's got number 18 on his back. <laughs> Briggs bowls. That's played him on. There's no run. In fact, he might even be an imposter. They might have stuck Hassan Ali under that garb. <laughs> see if they can sneak him into the game in the closing stages. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing him. He's likely to play at Southampton, all being well. A lot of excitement about Hassan Ali returning for uh, Warwickshire this summer. This next one is short, and it's uh, carved out into the deep. Uh, Greg Miles Fields. 2.14 for 4. Did you get to see much of him last season, Hassan Ali, here? Yeah, fair bet. He's pretty well. Yeah. So. Popular with his teammates. Mm. That's swept for four by uh, Potts. Nice shot down to fine leg. I want to know where they've got these like yeah, all got them things from. They? Yeah. <laughs> so we're not getting cold. And well, at least the necks aren't getting cold. I'm sure. I don't know if it's regulation too. clothing or what, but anyway. <laughs> I think they got frowned upon in football, didn't they? Because for a while, one or two footballers wore them. No. I think they got a bit frowned upon. I forget, who was the Manchester City overseas player? He used to wear one. I've forgotten his name now. I think they got sort of banned eventually. Mm -hmm. Not sure why. I suppose footballers do move around a fair bit more. Yates. And short of length. That's just cut into the offside there by Robinson. And cover comes around to pick it up. Pass it back around. Has Yates at the top of his mark for the second ball of the over. Uh, it's just on the left, <coughs> defended there by Potts, who's on his, his first class so score. Far on 109, it's made in first class 100. Okay. Got Many people in and around the park. <laughs> As Yates comes in, short of love, he's looked to cut that away, but it's a bit too straight to give himself enough room to work into that offside. There's only three fielders on the offside. He's got deep cover, a wide mid off, and a slip. But on a length, and that's punched to a very short mid, mid on there. As Yates with two balls left in the over. This was slightly more flighted but defended back to him this time. A couple of dots accumulated as he's returning for the final ball of the over. So he flies it again, hand from short mid off there, so we've only got one from it as it's collected. And that brings the end of the over. Durham are 219 for four, Robinson on 35 and Potts on 110. 219 for four. <laughs> I like this binocular phone set. Yeah. It's sort of stern. I'm getting to that stage of the evening where I can't be bothered to hold the phone in my hand. <laughs> I've created my little stand. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Tandy Briggs to bowl from the Birmingham end to bowl to <coughs> Robinson. Another update coming up. Two slips. Shortish mid on. Briggs bowls, and that's played into a bit of space by Robinson for a single. 220 for four. Briggs bowls, gives it a bit of air, it's swept, and that's four runs. For Robinson, he moves on to 39. And 
Durham are cruising now towards this draw. They lead now by 43 runs. This is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston, where Warwickshire's championship match against Durham is drifting towards the draw now. Warwickshire needed seven wickets on the final day. It was never going to be easy on a pretty flat pitch, and they've only managed two. Durham have batted well. They've been helped by a couple of rain breaks, so that's only taken 12 overs out of the play. And Matthew Potts, England uh, bowler, has scored his maiden first-class century, having come in yesterday as a night watcher. He's played very well. He's on 111. Ollie Robinson, the wicketkeeper, is on 39. Warwickshire have stuck at it um, and uh, use a succession of different bowlers, but just getting very little joy. Uh, Durham, 226 for four. This is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston. I think um, Marty's going to come and replace me. That's played towards a mid wicket for a single by Potts. 227 4 4. Now, just getting livened up a bit yesterday. It looked like it could be an interesting final day, but credit to Durham. They've prevented that from being the case on this final day. That's a full toss, which uh, is clipped away to mid-wicket for a single by Robinson. 2.29 for four. Uh, last ball of the over, and then uh, Martin Emerson will replace me. I'll bring Phil in shortly as well. As this game goes through its closing stages, I can't remember whether it's is it five o'clock or half five when we can finish. Well, it can't be. They can't declare at ten to five unless they really trust Warwickshire. <laughs> That's played through the offside <laughs> for four runs. Uh, Two thirty-two for four. I trust no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I think they need to bat till five. It'd look a bit silly if they declare at ten to five and then Warwickshire go and get the runs. Anyway, two thirty-two for four. Yates is set to continue. He will be bowling his 25th over. Now, so he's. So. <laughs> We're going to be playing a bit of musical chairs in just a second. So Yates is coming. In on a lamp defended into the offside for a single. It's Yates coming in, he's coming round the wicket now, he's firing it into the legs of Potts. Hmm. Tom the Bookie. This morning tweeteth. Mm -hmm. I'll find it for you. Yeah, he's on a lamp. Worked into the leg side where mid wicket picks it up. Is it just ascending around? You found some good things on Twitter today so far. <laughs> <laughs> Xavier, it says county cricket and able must be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's into the leg side. <laughs> Top four. Um, what was the reason for this must be stopped in April for County Challenge? Because a night watchman's got a hundred, I think. <laughs> Tom tweeted, Who knew we knew? Played Potsy lad. Four hours ago, he tweeted. Could be a good day. Matty Potts playing some shots. Incoming maiden first class century. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yates into the side. Just one from it. Well, he would be right, and that's. Potts is on 117, so he's flying now. Yeah, when he tweeted it, he said, he's practically there, just another 87 runs short. <laughs> yeah, and I think all those seasons ago, he didn't even have his own Gansey. He didn't, 2017. Yeah, he's into the legs there to finish the over. 235 for four, and I am going to think it. Last big score I can remember from a Durham night watchman was uh, 
it's um Sedba. About five years ago. There's probably others may have got hundreds, but it's nothing's ringing a bell at the minute. Good afternoon. You right? Yup. Just back on as so I look across over the city to watch it raining over the city again. Yeah, plenty of rain over there, but it's missing us at the yep. moment, I think. Yep. Twelve overs have been lost in this game. They took an early tier around about ten past three because it was raining. We've been very fortunate just yeah. to lose 12, haven't we? Is this Brawling Briggs bowling from the city end? Well, if the intention of using the Kookaburra was to try and encourage spin bowling, it's been successful to that end mm. in this match, Martin. That's a full toss turned towards long leg by Robinson for one. There's pictures of Dean Elgar wearing a snood, but a few moments ago I took one of... Um, Craig Miles, you couldn't see any of his face. His snood was grey. There's a few of them got them on out there now, but uh, that was Bethel's got the huge one. We can't see him at all. <laughs> Looks like the Invisible Man. Yeah. Potts plays this up to mid on, no run there. So still 25 and a half overs there, is it? Yeah, yeah. we are not going to get all those, are we? Oh, thumped hard by Potts, and I think he's out. Has that hit Kai Smith's ankle and shot into the hands of his teammate? No, says no. the umpire. No. Thought for a second it had. Yeah, it was almost one of the it's real ricochet, wasn't it? Breaks again. Oh. Potts goes to smash him into next week and misses the ball entirely, but he manages to keep his back foot grounded as the bales come off. 117, 44 in the first innings, 161 runs in this match. He made 147 all last summer. Yeah. This is pushed away towards square leg on the boundary. One run. Yes. Five centuries in this game now as well. Yeah. There is a bit of weather up there. We have just had... North of the city. <coughs> it's amazing how much has missed us today. Yes, it is. It's uh, It has tracked up and to the west side of the city and up from sort of Worcester that way. It's going to be great driving home in this tonight. <laughs> ah, you'll be all right. Squally showers on the right. You've got the wind behind you, you'll be up though. Be a side wind most of the way home. About an hour and a half it'll take you to get home tonight. Get on the back of the car around about the A19 at Dishworth. So yeah, eight uh, five centuries in this match. We had three in the first match here last week, so that's eight centuries here at Edgebaston in the first half of April. Mm -hmm. I reckon that must would be a record. Game's gone. I don't think that would have been bettered. Yates continues at the pavilion end and is squirted away for a single by Potts. To behind square on the onside. 238 for four. Pots onto 119. Terrific performance from him. Really has been. Yates again is in and bowls. And back goes Robinson. Cuts that away square on the offside. And that'll run down to the cover point boundary for four more. And he moves on quickly. Robinson seems to have... Uh, doesn't seem to have been in that long, but he's up to 48 from 50 deliveries, so virtually runnable. As Yates again is in and bowls. Robinson drives and drives past Oliver Hannon Dolby. It's being chased down to the fence, but he won't be stopped. It's four more. That brings up his half century. So Robinson becomes another half centurion. Well, he got one in the first innings, didn't he? Or not? No. Uh, yes, he did. He got 60. 60. Yeah. So well done to him. As the runs continue to flow in this game. 246 for four. So now 65 the lead. 
As Yates comes in and bowls, and forward comes Robinson, and he's out. He has got him, and Yates has got his third wicket uh, caught around the corner. I just checked with that one. Yeah, it was a short leg, wasn't it? Yeah, little catch there into the hands, and Yates deservedly gets his third wicket of the innings, his seventh of the match to go along with his 190 in the first innings. And Durham lose their fifth wicket, 246 for four. So, F for five. The the yeah, it was the substitute fielder, Carl Smith, who did the uh, the fielding, who took the catch. And Yates has been the, uh, the pick of the Warwickshire bowlers. Uh, he's plugged away, bowled 42 overs in the before, first innings. Before this match, he had eight wickets in his career. He's got seven in the game. Yep. He's bowled 60, this is his 68th it over of the match. So, well done to him. Uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, so, and I think he's, he's, he's got the ball to turn. He's turned it into the right-hander and he's, Probably got more out of the wicket than anybody else uh, on either side in this game. So what's the lead now? 65. Yeah, so 65 ahead. and uh, So they've gone from 25 behind when Beddingham was out to 65 ahead when the next wicket fell. So Graham Clark. Graham the Clark, back. yeah, the new batsman coming out, who also got, he got a half century in the first innings, I think. Yeah, I'll just check. He got uh, 76 of the first innings. So 24.2 overs to go when the wicket fell. Well, if there were to be a collapse, Warwickshire would still fancy their chances of uh, uh, giving it a dash to try and get uh, these anything, uh, anything from about uh, up to about 125. You would think. Here's Yates in. And Clark plays this one from the crease back down the wicket. Bright sunshine here now. The f handful of spectators, and it really is at the far end of the ground, who are sat outside in this stiff breeze blowing across. It's not been pleasant for watching cricket. This one is played into the ground and bounces up. And Burgess sticks a hand out and takes it. End of another over from Yates. And have uh, had <coughs> a lot more cricket than anybody would have expected. So well done to the umpires. They've made sure that they, uh, they've got the players back on the field as quickly as they possibly can. We haven't had these silly hold-ups, Martin, where it's had a rain break and then They've come out and said play will start in 20 minutes' time. Mm. They've got straight on with it, and I think full credit to them for that. Yes, they were out quickly, weren't they? Yeah. yeah sometimes you think, oh, come on, get them back out here. It's not going to change in 20 minutes. Briggs bowling here to Potts. Potts drives up to Davis at mid-off. No run there. Games today at Leicester, Northampton, and Trent Bridge all... Abandoned his draws because of rain. Playing a miss there from Potter. Hits the uh, pad. Nothing, though, in terms of appeals from the bowler or the keeper. Briggs, left arm over. Potts into the crease. Plays that on one foot. Back of the track to the bowler. We do have bright sunshine now. The, the thing is, because of these winds, of which are around about 30, 40 miles an hour, anything that is coming by is passing by pretty quickly. Yep. It's defended by Potts again. Yes, it's bright sunshine now over the city, over the back of the ground, whereas five minutes ago it was absolutely tipping down there. And another return ball from the batsman. Flying through this over, one ball left and then 23 remain.
breaks in, pots on his back foot, pushes that one away. And that is the end of the over. It's a maiden. I think Durham are, what are they, 65 ahead, so if they can push on, 125 ahead. Yeah, in the not too distant future, maybe 130 or so. Over's running out. Wonder if there's been any discussion. Just uh, up to that last over that Danny Briggs bowled, and this I wonder how often this has happened. Warwickshire bowled 125 overs of spin in this match. Wow. He's 126. Yeah, it's yeah, it starts and in and forward. Yes. Clark just pushing it away into the offside. To the there's nobody at points, and the ball actually rolls to a halt before it's picked up. So one more to the total, one more to Clark. In fact, I think that's Clark's first run. Actually, have I said that? Yes, it is. Yates gives that one plenty of air, and it's stroked away by Potts, who continues to bat really well. His concentration has been superb throughout the day. Suddenly hasn't looked like a number, what was he, nine on the batting order, wasn't he? Something like that. He's been uh, terrific the way he's played. Back he goes and there's a shout for caught behind, not no, out. That's LBW they're appealing for, but... Uh, well, not out any yeah. anyway. It's, uh, yeah, it, it hit his thigh pad, but... He's, oh, you've got the film yeah, on there. Yeah, it was uh, wider the stumps. It's difficult because the, the shadow of the ball's <laughs> co it's causing a second ball effect, really, isn't it? Here comes Yates again, because that plenty of air, and it's thumped away by Potts into the outfield for a single. One more to him, one more to the total. 248 for five. There aren't many left in the ground, are there? No, no. There, might there, be weren't many. there weren't many here to start with no. today. I think a lot of people looked at the weather and said no. Yates bowls and the other one goes past the outside edge of Clark's bat. And, uh, Burgess ends up sitting on the floor behind the stumps with that one. He topple backwards and uh, legs akimbo. And, uh, ball in his hand. There's actually it's a few in the room at the far end of the yeah. ground. Clark turns this next one from Yates to square leg where it's fielded by Bethel. End of another over. Another one ticked off. 2.49 for five. The lead has crept up to 68 now. It's 20 past four. We have 22 overs. So in real terms, we're going to get a lot more than 22 overs because Warwickshire have bowled spin throughout unless they bring on the seamers, which I think is unlikely. We haven't seen Barnard bowl a single mm. ball in this innings, which leads me to think there's maybe a little issue there mm. with him. He didn't bowl many in the first, either. No, he didn't. He only bowled five, I think, in the first innings. So is there some reason for that? If there is, we didn't get anything out of Mark Robinson when he was on mm. to indicate there was a problem. Um, but uh, it seems strange that he's not had a bowl. Um, if uh, this ends in a draw, then Durham will take... Ten points. They got two, uh, three, but they got three. three didn't, didn't they? They, they three. got three. I, I think. Written, I think I've written two down. No, they missed out on the. Did third. they miss on the third? Yeah, by about two overs. I think it was. Oh, right. Oh, I think I thought they got through. the three. Briggs going to continue. comes in and it's a full toss it's gone down the leg side taken by the keeper Durham were a hundred were 451 for six but it was 127 overs they must have got it Martin they must have got three must they, they must yeah. have got three it's working out it's just played away by because there were 331 no there were 402 for six in 116.3 so they've got 250 300 th 350 yeah, so they, they, got got they got three yeah. they got three yeah I thought they had. This is swept by Clark and away for four past square leg. Yeah, because they were 331 after yeah. 90 in the 95th, 96th over. So they scored 19 or 14 overs. Just 
just waiting while the the ball is retrieved from it went down by the side yeah. of the hover cover. They got three hundred and fifty for six after hundred and two overs, so that's yep. yep, so that's the three points. Yeah. So they'll get eleven from this game. No, uh, Warwick actually got seven bonus points. So this has flicked off the foot of Smith at short leg. <coughs> no run. So Warwick got 13 from the first, and they'll get 15 from this. Briggs again. Ooh. And uh, Clark goes for a slog sweep. It bounces down and hits him, I think, on the shoulder. He went low. That's actually hit him in the box area. But it looked like it was going down leg side. Briggs again. Left arm over, that's defended. He's sent a man out now to the deep cover boundary, a uh, deep mid-wicket boundary. He bowls once more, and Clark just plays that sensibly short on the leg side. That is the end of the over. 21 remaining, brackets in theory, close brackets. Apparently it was a subdued car on the school run this morning, Phil. It was what, sorry? A subdued car. Kids coming to terms with the fact that Easter holidays are over. Oh, oh school you... Today. Uh, they've had the... Uh, last week and the week before mm. up in the northeast. Yeah, our lot went back to school last Monday morning. So this is their second week back. They had the week before Easter and the Easter week and then went back last Monday. Yates is in and bowls uh, this one is run away by Potts into the offside there's a big gap out there and uh, Hannon Dolby has to come running round or ambling round rather from uh, mid off to go and pick the ball up but the batsman just wander through for a single got relatives in Tamworth who go to school in Tamworth and I think they only get a month in the summer holidays and they yeah. get an extra week at other, part, other times. There's a few schools done that. Clark leans forward and runs it through cover point for another single point for another single. Briggs does the fielding. Yes, what they've chosen to do is reduce summer holidays down and make say the October two weeks or and the February, February two yeah. weeks. Yeah, Which kind of makes sense. Mm. This next one is Speeding. just wrap him on the throw and push through quicker and wraps uh, pots on the pads. But uh, there was an appeal, but that would probably hit the two another set of stumps going across to the leg side. In he comes again, bowls and gives that plenty of air. And back goes pots and turns it fine. He's going to get uh, there's going to be certainly two runs. They're thinking about the third. Uh, Richard Ingworth doesn't signal anything, so he got back to that and turned it away. Nice little shot, got inside it and just helped it round the corner with the spin. Suppose if you've got two fewer weeks in the winter, you're saving on heating bills at so many schools, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. It's in. Back goes Potts, gives himself space and punches it away out to down to the cover boundary where Briggs does the fielding. The only thing with that would be this year, for instance, the half term was very early. Mm. Um, so it means that you've had the, the Christmas and then within about six weeks, you've got two weeks off again. And Easter was early, yeah. so a lot of holiday. This next one is pushed through by Yates. Played solidly by Clark. End of another over, another over ticked off. Uh, Warwick can't get a further breakthrough. Durham been really Potts has been the man today he's held this the night man who came in as night watchman last night has done the job and really beyond any expectation has made his maiden for last century he's uh, by long way his highest first class score uh, the previous 81 was his highest he's uh, well past that and uh, add that to the 44 he made in the first innings he's had a Real good game with the with the bat. Briggs in uh, the sunshine here in Birmingham. 
Left arm over from the city end, bowling to Potts. Ball is pushed off towards point, no run. We'll be saying Potts is a batsman who bowls the way he's going <laughs> here. Didn't manage to get a wicket in the Warwickshire innings. Nought for 106. But uh, he's made up for it with the bat. This is played away by Potts. Upfield to mid on. Somerset have got themselves out of a sticky situation at the Oval as well today. They're still batting. And they lead by 194. Ball picked up out of mid-wicket off. Pots there, thrown back in by Yates towards the keeper. So uh, Somerset 337 for 7 in their second innings. That was after Surrey made 428 in reply to bowling Somerset out for just 285. Not some Worcestershire drew earlier. Uh, they didn't get on there today because of the weather. Full toss turned around the corner by Clark off Briggs down towards long leg for 1. And that He's fielded by Bethel. Got his first wicket today in first class cricket. Bricks again. Potts plays the ball hard into the ground and back to the bowler. Still playing at Cardiff where Derbyshire are 207 for three. They need another 194 to win that one. Bricks again. Potts turns this into the legs of short leg Kai Smith and it's a single, it just squirts through the other side. Gloucestershire playing Yorkshire in Bristol. And they are 318 for six, so they need another 180. Down in uh, Southampton, Hampshire, in their second innings, they're 163 for four, so they have a lead of just 46 against Lancashire. Kent are batting at Chelmsford but they're five down in their second innings they're 112 for five against Essex they need another 263 to win that one they were they were about 70 or 80 for five so they've said things a bit there Yates starts another over he's in that giving that plenty of air and Potts drives it to mid wicket there's no run games between Leicestershire and Sussex in Leicester and Northampton Middlesex and Northampton were abandoned without a ball ball today as draws Yates again is in. This is turned round the corner wide of the leg slip. That uh, they'll come back for two. So Potts gets two more. North Hans, 552 for six declared. Middlesex, 553 for two. One and then called off, wasn't <laughs> it? Yeah, they one rained one and they called it yeah. off. They decided there was not going to be any result there. <laughs> Here's the eights in. Again, that's uh, given lots of air and beautifully played away by Potts right through extra cover. That is a magnificent shot. Mm. <laughs> really He's played a few is. of those. Days. You yeah. see where it's landed on those steps? That's the s about the third time he's played the ball onto those steps today. Just wide of mid-off. He's uh, a beautifully controlled shot. So... He came in number nine, he, and then coming in at number four was Night Watchman. This one he goes back to and turns to mid wicket. There's no run. I would suggest he might. My well, trouble is, you've got Carson Rain, who are both bat, can bat and score runs, mm -hmm. so he's not really going to get up the order regularly much higher than he is. This one is turned away behind square for another single down to deep square leg. 271 for five. The lead goes on to. Uh, oh, I haven't got this calculator with me as Yates bowls and uh, it's played down by Clark down in front of him. He's on 10 Clark. Pots on 133 at the end of the over. 271 for five. And Durham lead by 90. And it's getting to the point where really even if Warwickshire were to take wickets now in the time remaining there's 18 overs remaining um, in theory although we'll have more than that if, if necessary because we've got the hour haven't we from 5 o'clock so so do you say the lead was 90 yeah yeah, yeah. 
They were 181 behind, weren't they? 271 for yep. five now. They've done well, because they've, yeah. they've, they were in trouble this morning This morning when they resumed. 12 for two. So they've added two, 259 runs. Oh, leading edge from Potts, and it just loops into no man's land beyond Briggs and trickles up to mid-off. Probably well, the first false shot. I'm just going to say exactly the same thing. I can't remember Potts playing a false shot in this whole innings. And look quite rightly on his side dropping into that gap. Briggs again. Inside edge onto the pad there from Potts and it rolls out to the covered track. Two over on the offside. We've got two slips and a short leg for Potts here for Briggs. Briggs in again. Potts slams that at Kai Smith. It hits him in the chest at short leg. Who'd uh, be a short leg? <laughs> Burgess goes over and gets, gives him a slap and says, well fielded. I don't think he knew much about it, to be honest. In comes the bowler again, pots forward to this one and plays it back. Two Briggs along the ground. Davies is in very mm. close as a slip. He's actually down on his knees. Almost on the cut strip. He's right next to the keeper. Potts once more defends. Well, he's not, he's not that far up from the ground. Anyway, he's not a very tall no. man, is he? So now he's crouched. His hands and knees now. <laughs> That's the end of the over as Potts plays that back to the bowler as well. If the ball's slammed at you, it doesn't yeah. give you much chance of evading it, does it? The maiden. There haven't been many of those. So Yates has just bowled the one maiden. He's, uh, he's just about to start his 30th over to go with the 42 he bowled in the first innings. <coughs> Which for a person, a man who doesn't bowl a huge amount, um, oh, I haven't got my uh, play fair. Just gonna have a look and see how many bowled last season. As he starts a new over here from the Pavilion end, he's in and bowls, and there's a shout for LBW. Not out, says Richard Illingworth, the umpire. There were nine maidens so far in this innings. Yates bowled 76.3 overs last season, in the whole season. He's in and bowls, and that's again almost gets through, but. Uh, survives so Clark just chancing his arm a little bit so he's bowled 72 overs in this match he's done almost the same as he bowled in the whole of last season this one is run away into the offside the big difference is he only took two wickets last season and he has taken seven in this match so Ready at this stage of the season, a much bigger haul for him. He's in and bowls, and this one is clipped away nicely down to <laughs> deep back with square leg. Who's <laughs> is that Dan Mosley down there? Who's down on his hands and knees? Oh, is it Mosley or the Miles? Snoot on. It's Miles. Miles, and yeah. yeah, he's got yours. That's right, the one you did. Who goes trumbling along on his hands and knees to do the fielding. This next one sends Clark back onto his stumps, and there's no run. It's sun shining still here as uh, Yates about to finish another over, his 30th of the innings, and he's in and bowls, and this is just played up to Barnard, who. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with Barnard from the way he's running there, um, mm. Martin. So it's clearly not uh, an, an issue with his, uh, with a problem with his leg or anything. It might just be a stiff shoulder or something, but he hasn't bowled at all in this innings. And doubt now that they're going to... Oh, he's just bowled the ball down. I, I'm not sure what it is. That well, maybe they just don't think that... Conditions mm. suit his style of bowling. I yeah, know. something, isn't there? or he's fallen out with the skipper or something. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what he, he might be quite pleased he hasn't had to bowl much. 
Briggs. This is edged and out. Clark caught at fine leg. Who's that taking that catch? Is that Hassanai? No, who's that? That's Sam Hayen. Sam Hayen, I when think. When did he come on? He's come on as substitute. Oh. Well, he's underneath that snook. You can't see yeah. exactly who it is. It look, it does look like the Invisible Man has just caught, taking the catch. He's getting hugs and all sorts from his teammates. So, yeah, it's Sam Hayen, who has come round. He's snooked onto the field, I think, is the best way of describing that. So... Two, seven, two, four, six. Oh well, this might keep Warwickshire interested for a few minutes yep. until the next partnership develops. That one was worth 26 runs, though, from 50 balls. A, a, a trap was hatched and planned and worked. Bride and Cars coming out. He was on 12 yesterday when he got a bouncer and decided to hook it and he put it straight into the hands of the fielder on the boundary. It's surprising how many have perished actually looking, trying to hit to that short boundary. Mm. We've had quite a lot of ball, balls hit over it um, for sixes, but we also, during the course of the game, we've had quite a lot of wickets taken with people trying to do it and not quite succeeding. So Briggs gets a reward for all his efforts. His uh, first wicket of the innings. This is his 17th over, one for 55. And Warwickshire will still have an interest with that wicket. 272 for six. I'm going to make way for... Let's come into the climb. Briggs to cast. Cast defends on leg stump. I suppose next time we see you, Martin, will be for the T20. Will it? Yeah. I won't yeah. See. Yep. Come here. If you would like me to give you a yeah. hand again yeah. that night, I'll come over and see you. This is defended by Cars, yeah. So, end of this Phil, over. Phil, it's been nice to see you this week. Keep the pictures coming. I will do. <laughs> oh! Cars flicks at that one. It just escapes. And the left hand of Smith at short leg. Sun is shining here in Edgebaston at the moment. Lots of passing showers, heavy showers forecast today, but we've only had two shortish interruptions of six overs apiece. Next ball's gone off towards mid wicket, no run there. Briggs in again now, bowls. And Cars keeps that out. So that is the end of that over. So now the scoreboard says 15 overs remaining. But they're going to get to the final hour, if they do have a final hour, in 20 minutes. And uh, the way the speed they're going through these, there's going to be another six or 16 overs in yeah. theory. So I guess they're just have to be a little bit careful of something silly here. <coughs> they're almost there, but. Uh, 91 lead isn't quite enough to make the game safe. I see, uh, gonna be an interesting one at the oval. As in comes Yates. Oh, he's appearing for an LBW. It pots back on his crease. Somerset at 349 for 9. They lead by 206. Let me see how many overs there are left in that game. Well, there are only 24 overs left, although no, in sorry. You wouldn't bet against them. I got an email, I don't know whether you got it as well, whether you've read it or not, um, from Luke about snoods. No. Nope. Uh, okay, I'll oh, better. Uh, that's uh, play back to the bowler field if there's no run. He was writing a, a blog about snoods when he heard me mention them. So he sent it to me. That's played onto <laughs> the on side for a single. Says glad you and Marty are mentioning the snooze on show. Harmer is waiting one at Chelmsford too. And Dean Elgar. 
Don't use your email, but was in mid-blog posts on the subject on the day the uncle-nephew Denley duo batted together for the first time in the championship and my beloved Durham looked to hang on for a once unlikely draw with Potts unbeaten maiden ton as a night watchman. That one's four defensive, there's no run. And tributes poured in for the legendary Derek Underwood. The more eagle-eyed of the Badgers out there will have spotted a new fad on show. The humble snood made an unreported resurgence this round after its early 2010 heyday. Yeah, some football as well. Yeah, there, he it? comes on to say that. That's a four defensive, there's no run. In the Barclay Premier League, the neck warm was all white rather than black. Favoured by Belletti, Nasri and others. Aguero. I do remember one player wore a black one. Anyway, helped evergreen countrymen Dean Elgar and Simon Harmer through the nipping cold. Oh, I missed a full stop there, I beg your pardon. He's talking about the neck warm as the cricket was away, it all being white. Um, but Except Miles is his grey. But bedeviled fellow South African David Bellingham, as the snugly wrapped young Jacob Bethel claimed him as his first county scalp, with Durham following on. That's a four defensive no run. The snow went on to be banned by football's lawmakers, which is what I thought I remembered. After safety concerns, but the gentleman's game, civilised abstention from contact means no danger is posed. Just before four on the final day, uh, former Durham Lodi Craig Miles, only last week was temporary on the books of Glamorgan, was likened to, to a contestant on the popular ITV show, The Mask Singer. Yeah. He was totally concealed. That was me, I said that. It awaits the finishing touches, but I thought I'd say my piece. Uh, <laughs> says uh, Luke Newton Hall Durham. Thank you for that, Luke. New ball. Oh, I'm going to take it as well. Danny Briggs is going to take it. Smacks of just wanting to uh, <laughs> to use up another uh, cooker butter ball so they don't have to use them again. Um. Derek says, always great to see Matthew Potts and Graham Clark doing well. And thanks, Marty, to you and the team. As uh, Briggs bowls and Potts drives this way out towards the scoreboard corner of the ground. Is it going to make the ropes? It has. Just... The futility of the chase there, Clive. The futility yeah. of the chase. Well, good, good professional attitude. Keeps you warm, I suppose, if yeah. you run around. Um, Essex, look, it could well be that Essex are the only team in this round to win again in well, any mm. division. Uh, they have Kent six downs, only four more wickets. Um, but with... I was looking at the table with eight points for a draw. I thought, quite well, Essex will be miles ahead, but actually won't be. They'll be about... I think 14 points ahead of Warwickshire if this game is drawn. Conversation going on between Briggs and the skipper here as the ball is eventually returned. Derek says he's hoping for dry days for Almouth and Lesbury Cricket Club games this weekend. Hmm. <laughs> Good luck with that. I think it's going to be a mixed bag all week, isn't it? Quite chilly and windy and a lot of water passing by. The wind's never dropped all day, has it? No. In fact, it seems to be getting up again now. 277 for six as Briggs bowls. Potts jabs his bat down on that ball and it rolls away off towards mid-wicket. I'll, I'll talk you through this one and then Chloe can come back in. And then we're just uh, playing a guessing game as to yeah. when they'll shake hands. I think it'll be five o'clock, I think. Could be ten to five, but... Uh... Briggs again. Potts this time plays the ball out towards Sean Extra, covered at miles. I thought we were I'd want two or three more overs, just in case, mm. just in case. A lot of love shown for Sam Hayne after he took his catch. He's been away from the side for personal reasons. We don't know what those reasons are, but uh, lots of hugs and pats on the back from his teammates when he took that catch. The fact he's on the field now would suggest he is going to be around for Southampton starting on Friday. Breaks bowls. Potts drives nicely. That's a lovely shot. That's a way through the covers for four. Heading off towards the far end of the Holly stand. And uh, Miles jogs after it. The ball comes to rest about 10 yards beyond the rope. 281 for six, Durham. That is the 100 lead, isn't it? Hmm. It is. With what, in theory, what, an hour and five minutes to go. Um, obviously, Durham wouldn't bowl any extra overs, so you're looking at about 16 overs, 17 overs maximum. So even if they got four wickets this over, 117 overs, well, I suppose they'd fancy their chances of chasing that, but... Well, they're going to get two more wickets this over anyway. 
Potts steers this one towards backward point. There's a bit of hesitancy, and then he's told to get a move on <laughs> by Kars. He waves his hand in apology. And Kars is saying, that was my call. The ball had gone behind you. They went to Hain. He threw it to the bowler's end, but Potts was in safely. Potts will be thinking about a nice little asterisk by his name, a nice knot out to uh, improve his average. 143 at the moment. We only got to last another 10 minutes or so to get that not out. Bowler comes in and bowls. And that is played by Cars upfield to mid off. And that is the end of the over. So the lead's 101. The scoreboard says 13 overs remaining, but we haven't reached the last hour yet. That's 12 minutes away. Thank you, Martin Emerson. That might be it for Martin because we might not be back. So thank you, Martin. So you can hear him at Kidderminster, starting on Friday. The Worcestershire game. Sadly, we don't go to Chester Street, so we won't hear him again in the Championship from a Warwickshire point of view, but I expect we'll play Durham in something else at some point. Two hundred and eighty-two for six. I watched the manager take four wickets today. They needed seven. And it's Rob Yates who has got three. Seven in the match for Rob Yates. He comes in to bowl. And that's turned round. The short leg was no run. Chloe. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. This is where cricket possibly takes some explaining to people who don't really know the game. <laughs> In comes Yates to bowl, and that's played out to the offside. There will be two runs there to Potts. <laughs> that's gone right to the edge, but hasn't it? <laughs> Fielder teased him, I think, there, by letting it go to just in front of the rope. <laughs> so, Warwickshire will take 13 points in this game. I don't think Durham got any point penalties for a slow over eight, so they will get... 11. That's clipped runs a strangled appeal. I think for LBW, but uh, <laughs> no chance of that. So if I read the table right, it will depend on whether Essex win their match. If they do, they'll be... Uh, 28. They will be 15 points clear of Warwickshire, who will be second, a point ahead of Worcestershire if they assuming this is drawn that's padded back there's no run and then Somerset will either be on 26 or 18 depending on whether they draw or lose Knots are on 18 Surrey again depends whether they draw or lose if they win they'll they'll get 33 if they draw they'll be on 25 let's uh, play back and turn around his pads for a single square leg so if they did manage to get a win they will be 10 points behind Essex and they will be second in fact Warwickshire will be down to third if Surrey win and um, Durham being off the bottom does depend it's very early days yet so it doesn't really matter but it does depend on Kent losing if Kent lose and Durham will be off the bottom on 19 points just one point behind that's a forward defensive there's no run sorry but 9 points behind uh, no 1 point behind Hampshire right first time but Valio is, of course, just two matches out of 14. We do get a lot of games early season. So Somerset bowled out for 351. So Sorry need 209. And it says here 20 overs remaining <laughs> in the day. Well, you would not bet against them, would you? They'll go for it. They might end up losing going for it, of course. <laughs> Marty's tell us it's the third highest match aggregate for Durham, 1,500 runs now in the match. Yeah, that's a serious amount it's of runs run scored, scored, yeah. Run as <laughs> much as I enjoy describing runs, it does, there is a danger, it gets a bit repetitive after a while. <laughs> you can describe the runs now in uh, this over from Danny Briggs. Briggs in for his 19th over, two men on the leg side boundary. Around the back, so comes in and that's cut straight to extra cover there. 
just takes a little m moment to get back up. Hampshire Lancashire has now been confirmed as a draw at Southampton. Briggs and again has passes back to him. Now I missed that. We had the first incident of a player being out for 99 this season. You'd be surprised oh. how often it happened last season. I'll make Briggs. a note of players out for 99. Mm, cut away into the offside where it's being chased, but it's running along. The square van has been chased down for two. There were seven batters out for 99 last 99. season, including oh. Danny Briggs against Middlesex at Laws. Mm. All bar one were in the first division, actually. There was one here, Joey Everson of Kent was out for 99 against Warwickshire. And Alistair Cook was out for 99 <laughs> for Essex against Nottinghamshire last season. So that's the, the first instance of it this season has been um, George Bell, who was run out. Oh dear. Oh, going too keenly for that hundredth run for uh, Lancashire. We made four eighty four on their first innings and then Hampshire hundred and seventy nine for four when it uh, was declared a draw. Yeah, that's not what you want getting out on no. ninety nine, is it? No. I think absolute gutted. And I thought I thought well, maybe maybe senior cricketers don't worry about it too much these days. Remember once. Breaks on a lamp driven back to mid on there. I oh, yes, Ian Bell's out for 99, so you disappointed the out for 99 doesn't matter. Oh, no, 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 not disappointed at all, <laughs> he said sarcastically. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Breaks again, full of lamps driven there. <laughs> so obviously, it still matters. It is the yeah. quirk of cricket, though, isn't it? Why, <laughs> why should one run? Be so important. Yeah. It's a big one run, though. Big one yeah. run. <laughs> and then it brings it again to Potter, who was on 148. What's your uh, top score? Uh, uh, it was the second 11 game last year. Uh, 136 oh, wow. red. Oh, very good. We came off for rain, and I was on 90. Five. Uh. And we were off for 45 minutes. <laughs> I was I was so stressed. <laughs> I was like, please, can we get back on? <laughs> oh, yeah, that wasn't great. I was badgering the umpires. I was like, surely it's dry enough now. <laughs> it's, it hasn't rained for 20 minutes. Uh, oh, you've got my... I'm just trying to see. You don't, don't, don't don't to put the, they don't put the stats on, do they? No, they don't. Oh, no, that's a shame. Oh, well. Batting all rounder there, so that's all right. They call you a batting all rounder, so that's fine. It's 79 and 40 in two appearances to finish top of South East Stars batting averages and the Rachel Hayhoe Trophy in its inaugural season. So that was yeah, pretty good. Well, go. yeah, apparently, you bowled useful medium pace. Useful. Oh, I'm glad I've <laughs> said it's useful. <laughs> uh. <laughs> right. Well, we're going, ah, here we go. Yeah, we, so I think we are going to finish very soon at five o'clock because we're now seeing Michael Burgess have a bowl. He's taking the wicketkeeper. Is it Will Rhodes? He's taking the <laughs> wicketkeeper's gloves. So we are now into silly season. Um, yeah, Will Rhodes behind the stumps. He actually bowled quite a lot at Northampton in a dead game. Actually bowled pretty well. That one is uh, pitched up and it's dispatched away by Cass. So Cass is off the mark with a four. So this, I would imagine, will probably be the last over of the match. They'll probably make sure it takes them up to five o'clock. <laughs> I love it when this kind of stuff happens. <laughs> well, of course, it's always a nightmare for the batters, isn't it? They're <laughs> petrified of getting out to a bowler like this. And this one's a quicker ball. It's solidly defended by Cass. There's no run. Essex need just three more Kent wickets now to win. So... Just look as if Essex are likely to secure their second win out of two this season. All the other games are past. Necessarily do something spectacular at the Oval. It's looking like all the other games are still out there. We're the draw, except possibly at Bristol. This next one's a quicker ball and caught by the wicketkeeper Rose, but it didn't come off the bat. Well taken by Rhodes. Um, Yorkshire need four more Gloucestershire wickets. Gloucestershire need 160, which I presumably won't get, but uh, Yorkshire need four more wickets at Bristol to beat Gloucestershire in the second division. So Burgess into bowl. Let's play it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> Never 
twos and R's. Michael Burgess. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, he has got one first class wicket to his name. Michael Burgess. Yeah. It's probably that game at Northampton. He's got a bouncer and he's trying to pull it there, Carson. Played right over it. And this will be a leg by. Um, I know he didn't take a wicket that game against Northampton, so I don't know where his first class wicket came from then. Um, I'm intrigued by this now. Yeah. Anyway. He, let's see, I mean, it was his bold in his career. Well, 134 balls before this one. Quite, quite a lot. That's played onto the onside. One more run for Potts. He could get 150 here, although that was the last ball of the over, so he might be denied that. Potts, are we going to get one more over in? I think it's not quite five o'clock, so we probably got will. That's minutes. probably why Potts made sure he got a single there, so he's got a <laughs> chance to get that 150. Who are we going to see ball this one, then? <laughs> well, it's going to be Dan Mosley, so it's... Oh, no. There we go. Oh, we Shaking go with the day. Shake your hands. It's all over. Oh, 149. Bad boss. But he'd be very happy. 149 mm. is a good effort. Um, so, so, as you hear, the tenor of the match is settled as a draw. Donovan finished 293 for six. So it's not quite at five o'clock. I suppose technically they've declared. There's a bit of a chat going on there, actually. I don't know whether... Don't know about us. Uh, come on, couldn't you bowl one more over to let him get 150? <laughs> but um, I suspect it may be the watch didn't even notice that. To be fair to them, but anyway, it is all over. Uh, there seems to be a bit of bewilderment out there and a bit of confusion. But uh, off go Durham. You must have agreed to it as well. To be fair, but there we are. Um, so there we are, Chloe, thank you very much, Dean. Good luck on thank Saturday. You, thank you very much. Have a good one. Thank you very much. Be a useful medium pacer, don't forget. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much indeed. We'll hear you on your... Let, listeners will hear you at Kidderminster. Which day are you there? Uh, first day on Friday. First day on Friday, OK. You can listen to Chloe there. So, I've just got to do a quick report and that will be that. Will be that. Matthew Potts finishing 149 not out. Bryden Cars on four. Durham finishing the match on 293 for six. The other key figures in the innings. Ollie Robinson's 52 is really the only one with a bat, and for Warwickshire, 3 for 121. For Rob Yates, who finishes with.